it's really unfortunate. This is the, the least happy I can be as a consumer is getting these boxes. I hate, like this is stupid. It's dumb. I'm just gonna end up there, finally, after I ripped it and got frustrated. Oh man, again, so thick, I love it. Like this is just a joy to interact with it. The stuff, I don't know, it just feels premium, feels nice, I like it. This guy, his head, because the arm separates the neck, always feels like it's just like pasted on. Um, it, it's just because of how it's laid out, but it's really funny. Um, like, <laughs> he's on the top of that too. Hey guys, and welcome to another unboxing. This is probably gonna be a long one because what I have is huge. So before I get out of breath trying to show you this thing, I just wanted to point you again towards my shirts. If you're a nerd like me and you like nerdy shirts like the John Wick one I've had and there's a Metroid one coming, I got you know, Sora here now. Link in the description below for like a 10% off coupon. I, I don't get anything with in-store credit for it. It's like I'm trying to like sell things or something like that. But I, I know I'm super nerdy and I've fallen in love with this site and I've been getting a lot of shirts. So if you think you might like what you see there too, link in the description below. Okay, now. Let's get started on this. Now, I'm gonna try something here and let, let's let's just see how this goes. So, this is one of the two boxes I'm unboxing. Let's get started. Okay, so we are gonna start by just taking stuff out of boxes because I think that's the first thing we need to do. For sure. So let's go ahead and start with the big one and then move on to the small one. Oh, I can like barely reach here. Oh again, sorry for any weird camera angles or anything like that. I'm, 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 I don't know what, what you want from me here. This thing is bigger than some of my children. Uh, oh. I think the reason this is so big is because I got like the the kind of the big boxes to help store things in. And those just take up a lot of space, but I don't, I don't think they're really packed for anything because I think this is about as heavy as the small box, the small box. And so we'll kind of see what's in here. And you know, also look how well packaged this is so far. Really, I love this stuff. This uh, like kind of tightly woven, very dense kind of bubble wrap stuff is really nice. And I like that they just literally layer it on there. This It's just filling up space. Uh, kind of a, a nice efficient way of doing it and it's easy for me to kind of open up um, But also to kind of dispose of like it doesn't uh, it's not like packing peanuts or anything weird like that So see like all of this on top Is just filling up space. That's all this is See. All right Let's see here Oh my gosh. All right, so I see one box here Ugh. All right all right, this is the faces of the fear expansion. This is some of the new stuff. That's exciting. It's all new to me. All right, then what, what do we got here? Is this the, the art book? Oh, I can't wait for that. The art of deep madness, excited about that. All right, and then we got, I'll take this out here, not really. Let's get one of these out maybe. Here is, oh gosh. The Profundum box. And then in here, oh, this is the big one, huh? Let's see what we can do here. I'm gonna have to take some of these out first. So far, this looks really well packaged. I'm gonna have to inspect the boxes, but I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Endless Nightmare expansion. Oh, right. oh man. Okay. Oh, this one's heavy. Uh, here's just Deep Madness. Okay. I think, oh my, all right. So let's see what we got here. We got some doors. <sighs> A dice bag. I'm not even lifting anymore. We got a Drifter King epic monster. We got we got we got a whole bunch of stuff here. We got a 
John Murdoch, investigator. Uh, anything else? Oh, I feel something. Ward Phillips, investigator. Eh, are we good? Get this other big box out? My goodness, this thing's big. Wow, okay. Oh, and this is... Oh, sorry about the microphone. The Monstrum. Right, let's just put this up. We'll take a look at it all. And that is it. Okay, so I'm gonna pause the camera and get a better angle. It kind of actually not be so far out. Let's uh, let's get the smaller box too. All right, here's the smaller box. Let's see what's in here. All right. Honestly, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't even remember what else I got. It is kind of funny though. I felt like some of this probably could have been in the other box. I wonder if there was like a weight thing or they just didn't feel comfortable with the amount of... Oh, see, this is a bummer. Look, look at all this deflated here like that. Oh, I guess they had this over it, so that's fine. I guess it almost had to be. It was filled to the top. Oh, man. Can I lift up with this? <laughs> no. It's just going to move out. All right, let's see here. Okay, so here we have the Oracle's Betrayal expansion. Man, you know, <laughs> at this point, I really hope I like this game because I got enough of it, that's for sure. And we got the Rise of the Dagon. Oh, I'm running out of room here. Oh, it just keeps coming. How many expansions do they make? And we got the Encounted Horrors expansion. All right. I think that is enough. And look, that's it. Ah, uh, finally. What should we open first? Yeah, no, I don't know either. Uh, let's open the main game first. That, that seems applicable, right? Maybe we should do that. I wonder who this Jelly Cube is. Is that the manufacturer they use? For I feel like they used um what was it Star City Games? Is that is that what it's called? Star City? Uh maybe yeah, I believe they do the same thing that uh Death May Die did uh so by come on also used the same manufacturer. I don't know who this jelly cube is. And uh uh Limbo Eternal War is also using them, and I know they did deep madness stuff as well. Unless I'm like way out of line and I'm just mixing things up. Uh, so I don't know, I don't know what Jelly Cube is. I need to start learning these other companies. <laughs> like, like I know, uh, Awaken Realms use a Aster, Easter, I don't know how you pronounce it, but, uh, so sometimes I think the manufacturer matters uh, even a little bit more than perhaps when it comes to the actual final production quality of things. They're, they're a big factor in it, if nothing else. I'll, I'll just, I'll word it that way. Um, I feel like I'm like doing some kind of weird surgery. So I'm like slicing it and then kind of peeling it back. It's like, uh, performing surgery for, you know, something or whatever. All right. So let's take a look. See what we have here. Uh, this is actually fairly thick. You can tell it's not like super crinkly or anything. I do like that. I always, I, oh. I don't know. It just, it feels so much nicer when it's really thick like this. I mean, like, I can't even, like, if I go to a seam, even then, ugh, very hard. I've had sleeves on my magic cards that break easier than this. Yeah, that's nice. That's really nice wrapping there. All right. Uh, box looks pretty good. You know, a little kind of rough around the, the edges sometimes, but that's kind of normal. I will say the um, the glue job here is a little... Let me make sure I'm focused. I did not change my focus at all. There we go. You guys can see what I'm looking at now. So you can see, you know, the, the line right here where it was wrapped and glued. And granted, you know, I mean, you kind of have to do that for the most part. And you always want to hide it on the corner. And it's not quite at the corner, right? It's a little bit off. Now, that might actually be good. It might catch more if it was literally on the corner. But it is something um, that I know. So the glue here, 
Um, maybe not the uh, cleanest I've seen the the corner here also is, is a little smashed. You, you can feel it more than see it. Um, so this feels flat right here. You can kind of see that. Um, but otherwise, I love the... Uh, to me, this is a very catching uh, art. It, it's definitely more... Let's see if I can really get it there without all the shine. More retail. Um, it's got... It's, I mean, it's got like this finish. A little nick here. Nothing major. Um, you know, there's no like UV or anything like that, and it's it's got a kind of wording here and several companies and all that. Um, so it's not very Kickstarter-ish, but I love the black with then kind of the swirl of bright color right there, right underneath the deep mana. So I think it's laid out very well there. So I do like that. One to six players on the back. Um, very much just kind of a story. It tells you kind of what you get here. Let me see if they say miniatures or figures. Figures. Stop saying figures. They're not figures. They're miniatures. I don't know why that bothers me. It's it's something I don't know. Um, I just prefer it when it says miniatures. To me, when you say figures, you're not taking it seriously. Uh, for whatever reason, I see figures on like like I feel like Monopoly would say they have little figurines that they have or some junk like that. They wouldn't call them miniatures. You don't get a miniature, um, you know, dog and airplane in Monopoly. You get a a, a figurine of a uh, a dog in an airplane. So I prefer miniatures, um, but that's probably just me being really anal retentive about it. I'm not sure. Uh, download your free Deep Madness theme song today at dark darkravinegames.com. Audio Deep Madness and a QR code. Very cool. I'm reading down there, by the way. Sorry again. I'm a little zoomed in here. Let me actually see if I can't. All right, zoomed out a little bit for you guys, so you guys can really see what I'm looking at. Anyway, there's there's a, a free. Uh, uh, theme song, <laughs> kind of like Captain Planet or something, probably. All right, let's let's take a look inside. Let's take a look inside. See what all the fuss is about. Okay, so very black on the outside, and look at that. They blacked the inside too. I like that. Um, it, it with with this black and this dark of a game, I think that's pretty fitting. Uh, so I actually appreciate that. And the glue in here is that. So <laughs> this is cool. Um, you can actually see. A little bit of the glue here like they that there's plenty of glue here and this is completely flat all the way around it looks like this is where they started it right here and where they ended it in fact you see it doesn't quite come like this is raw cardboard here uh, you guys probably can't see that but I can see it um, okay so yeah it looks like it was four different strips here this one overlays a little bit here instead of right at the corner um, and again kind of some of that glue residue that kind of whiteness around there as well. Probably really notice it's because it's so dark here and a little bit of a lip here, but that slid on and off like really good. Um, just just kind of like opening that, that's that's actually really nice. Uh, no farting, That's I don't, I don't know if that's a pro and a con for you, but box didn't fart. Okay, coming from Arena, this is an immaculate rule book, which I really appreciate because there is some room to kind of jostle around a little bit in here. So I'm kind of glad to see it didn't do that. All right, so I changed the lighting on this. Hopefully this will look better for you guys. When I first put it on, it was super bright. I think this is a little bit better and you can still kind of see everything here. Uh, the back of here is not an index and that's uh, 56 pages, no index. Um, the, the <laughs> winning, so you know, Martin Sheen's gonna like this one, I guess. Um, I don't wanna ruin any story or anything. This looks like it's a combined kind of campaign or, you know, mission slash rule book. So maybe I love the, the detailing here, by the way, it just it, it looks very, very nice and fitting to the theme, um, but not like cheesy either and not overdone, which is quite nice. Um, anyway, anyway, well, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll know more about that in the review. What I want to get at is the actual end of the rule book, because maybe they put it there. It's a lot more inconvenient, and if it's not in the back, if it's like in the middle, you have to turn to a page. Unless it happens to be where they stapled it, but... Um, okay, so this looks... Here's credits here. Okay, so you get 27 pages of rule book. And a fairly dense rule book. Uh, it looks fairly well laid out. I definitely like how prominent the headers are. It's not like a header three to a paragraph where it's pretty much just bold. It's, it's very obvious. And then the main ones have the lines. I appreciate that. But again, no index. If, if congrats on being here on this credit list, by the way, this looks great and definitely a passion project. I can tell from the, the art to the, just kind of the, the, 
the, the quality of this book is actually really, really nice. Like it feels good. The pages are nice and thick and all that. So take the time to put an index in. If you're making anything technical, if you want me to use this rule book and really use it, put an index in here. The last thing I want to do when you spent so much time making this look good is frustratingly grabbing this and just trying to figure out where, you know, something is. And I finally found, you know, what I needed to know, you know, in this list here or something like that. But if I had just known that, you know, uh, maybe your actions are mentioned here in the activation phase from an index where I could look up actions in an alphabetical list that told me every page that actions were mentioned, I'd be a happy camper. I'd be like, this is a great experience. Instead, if I have to use this at all after reading it, it's going to be kind of frustrating. I'm just going to have to pray and hope and try to remember and leave through and pause the game and people start getting up and making sandwiches and uh, ordering pizza. Who knows what's going on while I'm trying to figure out how to play the game. So put an index in. If you're going to spend this much time to make it nice, it's worth the effort um, just to hear me stop complaining, if nothing else. Uh, I like the lore here. Art, spending two pages is nice. Um, this guy is not happy right now. Uh, so this is nice. I tell, I, tell, I say often when I see a component list, I, I, what I mean by list is actual images too. And I mean nuanced like this so that, so that when you say, you know, uh, energy tokens, I know you're talking about this token. If you say, uh, a devour marker, you're not just saying place a devour marker there. And I'm like, well, what the freak is the devour marker? And I look at the component list and it says one devour marker. Well, that's great, but what is it? It's that. That's the devour marker. It helps if people want to open their box and make sure they got everything. It helps just when I'm reading it, if I can reference back, because sometimes it'll be obvious and I'll be like, okay, whatever. But sometimes I might not know what an identity marker is. And so if I don't know what an identity marker is versus a support token versus a devour marker versus an energy token, it, it makes it confusing and it makes me not quite understand the game. I almost have to look at YouTube for some kind soul that put a video together. So having a list of components like this is awesome. This does not make up for missing an index, but it is definitely a positive in my book. I like that. I love the custom dice too. Come on, you can learn from this. Put custom dice in your Kickstarter games. It's the least you could do, literally. All right, so lo lots of components. I do like that. Full color, that's nice. Uh, let's see, setup starts right there. Uh, the callouts here are really nice. I'm liking the kind of the callouts. A lot of diagrams and arrows, and um, it looks like notes are called out here. Not necessarily in like call out boxes though, and examples and looks looks cool. I'm liking all that. All right, so you know the the, the rule book itself again looks great. Just needs an index. All right, moving on. Look at that. We finally made it to this part. This is going to be a long video. All right, now looking at this, actually, so this is bothering me, by the way. I don't know what this is. Um, some kind of scuff mark, but it's, I'm, I'm, I might actually add Sharpie to that. That's, that bothers me. Um, okay, so we have a flat lid, fairly flush. Um, you'll see a few moved here. Obviously, they were able to kind of wiggle uh, free. That tells me two things. It means it's probably not snap in. Thumbs up on that. But because of the no dimples, it looks like like really good here and it looks really awesome, but you do cut a little bit of that. Two out of this, we'll look at it, but if it's just these two, I'm probably okay with that. It's not gonna be too big a deal. If if I lift off this train, there's a whole nother one. That's gonna be unfortunate. Uh, another thing I actually like is the heroes. First of all, it's very obvious where they go, um, I feel, uh, but I like that they're not like up here. This is where this is where most people do it. It's right here. I, I don't I don't know who decided that. Um, it is abnormal, and I appreciate it. I think it just gives it a oh, tape. Oh man, um, I think it just looks a bit a bit nicer, a bit more artistic in your layout. I guess I'm just gonna throw that. I bet it's on all four sides. Oh, is it only on two? Oh, I'm so happy. All right, I'm, I'm okay. You know, if you, minimal taping is fine. And honestly, do you really need all four? You need all four just to secure a lid. I think you designed something wrong. Or you're shipping something wrong. <laughs> well, if three fail, there's still one that's gonna hold it. Well, that's not true. It'll jostle around and lift up in the corner or something. All right, there goes the lid. And we got the miniatures. And, uh, oh man, we might have to wait up on miniatures because I'll probably want to zoom in on miniatures. So I'm going to set these aside actually for now. 
Let's set these aside and go to this. All right, yeah, see, so we got some tokens I gotta open up here. They are wrapped, and it's a very tight wrap. That being said, I'm not seeing a lot of, uh, a lot of bow here noticeable right away from here. Sometimes, I don't know if they wrap up too tight or whatever, but it kind of bends it a little bit. But these look good. And this is kind of my point. So a lot of people say like, well, you know, moisture and blah, blah, blah. The, all my games would be affected and they all go over the freaking ocean, right? To get to me. I'm sure there's plenty of moisture on the ocean. So you don't need to talk to me about dry versus wet climates here. Trust me, my humidity is not as much as the freaking ocean. Um, it's all about the quality of your cardboard. And nothing else as far as I'm concerned. Uh, okay, so right now I can tell you this feels, um, I guess the best word to describe it is retail. Um, and and, and I, I know that that's, I don't wanna say assuming, that, that sounds bad. Um, it's not necessarily what I mean. I just mean that, yeah, so uh, the tags do kind of hold it a little bit. So if I just try to push on there, you see the tag right there. Um, it's it's not super smooth. You get kind of that linen finish that, and it, I want to say it feels dry. Um, it, it almost feels a little soft. Like if, if you were to press it on that, you almost feel like you can squeeze the cardboard together a little bit more. In fact, I want to say I can actually give it some flex here. Um, like I, I can feel it kind of moving in, so compress it down. So it's not, like if you take a monolith, um, which, in my opinion, are like leading the way when it comes to amazing cardboard experience. Um, I could punch out their cardboard tokens all day. If they sold me a box of cardboard tokens, I might actually buy it. Um, it just, theirs are like very hard surface and then super compressed, almost wood-like. This is not wood-like. This is feels like you glued a whole bunch of paper together. I'm not saying they're bad. It looks like they're actually very well uh, cut and it's actually kind of smooth. Like it, it doesn't feel rough. You're not catching a lip or anything really. Um, so I, I'm okay with that. It's just a, a general feeling on your fingers. In fact, you can almost like it, now my fingers feel smoother from touching it. Like there's some kind of weird coating on it or something like that. I, I don't know. I just know it's not my favorite tactile experience. They seem to be doing fairly good. This is a complex uh, shape and it seems to be doing quite well. And in fact, because of how tight that is, the, the tags here are very minimal. Uh, so in general, I am fine with these. I mean, they're, 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 they're fine. They're not bad. Um, and the, no pieces here. Let's see, like it could like, morph or something weird like that because they're so tiny. So let's, let's look at some bigger ones and see if we have any warped tiles. This is just a freaking core box here. I'm already taking forever. So what do you guys do on a Saturday? Oh, I watch, I don't even know when I'm releasing this. I watch King of Average, like unbox a box for like three hours. Why? Well, you know, he obsessed about glue for half of it. All right, come on. I'm trying to, you know, like quick, quick open tabs or something like that. What they need. No, stop rolling. I swear like my table is uneven. I don't even know how that works. Like not an unlevel, I guess is, is the word. Hopefully it's even. Even what? I don't, I don't know. God, this is embarrassing. You guys just want to see me struggle. I know. That's what it is. Just skipping around waiting until I can't open a tile package. It is kind of interesting to me that, oh gosh. Again, this stuff does not rip. It like does not rip. Very, like, you can't even really crinkle it. Like, it's impressive stuff. All right, so how to test if they're warped. It's easy, you take half of them, you flip them. If you see the space, then there's some warping. Depending on how much space you see is how upset you can be about it. So looking here, you see there is a space. What that means is that they're not, per if they were perfectly straight, perfectly straight, you would see no space right there. Okay, so this right here shows that there is a warp. Now, how much, I don't know, but that's how you would tell, right? So in fact, if, if you uh, flip this, I guarantee the flip will move with it. So on that one, actually, it looks like those four line up a little bit better, and now it's this one. So I don't know what exactly is. So if you do that, oh, I think I flipped them the other way. Maybe, maybe that's it. Let's try this. 
There you go. So there, there's where I was kind of thinking. And it looks like it's just on these, which means it's this way, not necessarily this way. All right, so let's lay some of these down and see. Looks like it was maybe flipped up, curled up this way. So these are very tiny, and therefore I don't think we're gonna really see anything. It looks like um, very slight. This is not gonna affect your gameplay at all. Um, the most you can kind of worry about is sometimes if it's bad enough on the corners, like it'll start to go over under, but these are fairly, uh, I think they're they're too thick for something like that. It seems fine. I'm okay with it. Again, some you can expect a little bit. I mean, this is this cardboard, and I already told you how the outside isn't super hard. It's it's not not like that. All right, so then we got a whole bunch of tiles here. I'm just gonna open them and flip them. We're not gonna really look at them. Um, I will say right now, I don't believe the scale is correct uh, in the art. Not necessarily a deal breaker, but is something I always tend to try and see is how consistent the scales of the art to the miniatures. And in my opinion, um, it, it is kind of a sign of not not surefire, but it, it, it's something that kind of tips me off on how um, integrated their various processes are and how much they might be outsourcing or just piecemealing out. And what I mean by that is to have your art match your miniatures. That means your your uh, sculptors, your designers, and your artists all have to be kind of working together to kind of decide on a scale and what works along with the game design. It takes just about every single um, little bit of warp there too, as you can see. Um, again, that is so tiny because you, you got to remember it's both warping at this point, right? This is warping this way, so it's the warp is half of the distance that you see here. Um, that these these are are going to be fine. I find if I take those two bottom out because we know those are right, and there's there's no like a little bit right here. You see that? See that little lift there? A little bit right there, tiny bit. I imagine it's going to be fine. They might expand again in my review. I'll mention if they're like going crazy here. Looking at this tray real quick. Let me let me take this tray out. Very, very thick. You hear how, yeah, so if you take a come on one out, it's gonna be like crinkly. This, this would hurt your ears. Me lifting this would just crackle in the microphone like crazy. Um, there's no crackle. Very thick, very premium plastic there. That's super nice. Very nice. Um, I also, um, Claustrophobia did this as well. I like the black uh, shapes here, and I'll mention more about why I like the black here in a little bit here. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the other kind of various components real quick. Thank you for putting a resealable bag. A lot of times these are in a, kind of a plastic bag that isn't resealable. This, again, super actually thick. This is kind of chunky. Um, like I can't bend this. That's kind of nice. I like this. Okay. Um, is this spinner stuff? Is Are we supposed to spin something? Well, I guess we'll find out. Uh, some clear standees there. I'm not going to bother taking them out, but they're there. Um, these are your kind of standard hard clip-on bases, so they are hard. I will say I like the colors. The colors are very distinct, and I like that a lot. Those look good. Dice! And this barely fits in this bag. All right, so... Oh, man, that is a good red. Red and black. Great choice. Uh, look at this. Look at that custom die. Look at that. C come on, do you, this is called a custom die, and I didn't pay anything extra for this. They gave this to me. I feel so special. Um, it, it's amazing how good you feel as a consumer when you unbox this thing you spent hundreds of dollars on, and you get a fancy cool little dice. This is a sweet one, by the way. Like, I dig that. I'm looking at it, and it looks kind of interesting. So, for instance, um, the layout can sometimes matter because when you're rolling a die, it, 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 you can kind of help see how swinging this is. I don't know what these mean, but when you're rolling a die, often we kind of go in, in a pattern, and so you get kind of the same rolls. That's why you see some people roll well, and some people tend to consistently roll worse, um, because you tend to roll the dice the same way each time. Even if you think you're doing it different, how you, how you toss it at the end, how many times you shake it, all that kind of stuff, where you grab it, typically kind of matter. And so when you see stuff grouped 
like these three kind of around here, the, if you tend to roll it a certain way or like how these two are only here in a line like this, you'll tend to get ones versus the other. Um, just something to keep in mind. I don't know all the math around which way is which and all that, but there's also like tons of different ways you can roll dice. So I'm not sure how you could even get that. I just know that's something to kind of look at. It's why you don't use spin down die to roll 20. You will get very different results. A spin down die is where it goes 20 to one on the 20 sided die in a row. So 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, like this, all right? Instead of being opposite, like 20 here and one here or something like that. All right, looking at this, looking at this, I need my pointer. All right, uh, so good grief. Here, let's just, let's just take a couple here. Um, again, love the custom dice, easily readable here. Um, so I notice here the, the six and the nine, I'm assuming you go shield, you know, kind of like, kinda like a, a, a shield symbol here. So the point goes down and that's how you can kind of tell six versus nine, unless the nine is formatted differently. I'm not sure, or it just wouldn't make sense to go five, nine. <laughs> maybe it's on a six out of die. Maybe it's a six. Who knows? Whatever. Um, yeah, this looks, so there's some fine detail here and it looks pretty darn good. This is painted in. Um, so this, this could technically scuff though. It seems fairly recessed in, which I like. I like that the four doesn't, that's a good font there. I like that four. Um, yeah, these look great. Th they do have some scuff marks, but they're not a solid color. There's a little bit of glitter in there. And that actually helps, I think, hide that a lot. And good curves on the side. They're actually quite rounded. Those are gonna roll really well. These, uh, w with how shiny they are and the slight glitter to them, these might be my favorite custom dye in a game. I've, like, I, re I really like the colors. I like the deeper dark red. Um, my favorite red is like an apple red. So even a little bit darker than this, but I definitely don't like, like the, the sports car red. That's too bright for me. This is really good. I like these a lot and I'm not seeing any like bad paint jobs or uh, chips out or anything like that. No, those are nice. I like all of those. Great. I'm just going to set them over here for now. It's going to be a mess. I don't know what this is. I don't know if I'm even going to get it out. I will say there's no um, uh, recess here to help me grip that. So just going to have to hope and pray. Uh, well, I guess, guess we should open up because I don't see any others the size and I want to kind of test the thickness and the thickness matters on these. Uh, if they're smaller cards, they matter less. If they're bigger cards, the thickness matters more. So this won't matter as much here. Um, but if you see an issue, even with the small cards, then you might have an issue. Okay, so right now, linen finish, um, they, they feel exactly like uh, my Star Wars Rebellion cards look and feel. Uh, they feel pretty much exactly like that, um, if memory serves me right. It's just kind of interesting that they closed both here. So uh, these are just blank and I have no idea why. I'm not sure why those are blank. That seems kind of silly. These are just kind of, uh, I guess your people, just kind of quick images of them. I don't know why you would necessarily have that. Oh, I think like a turn order or something like that. There's something where like you you decide who goes where and you place the card there. Uh, some nasty enemies, uh, very dark, um, just kind of like, like for instance, I. In the middle there, you can't really see what's going on. And I think this is the art style in general. It's just kind of dark and a hint of what's going on here. Um, it's more mood lighting, like from the back of him, right? He's not lit from the front. Uh, same here, a lot of backlight. You see the uh, highlights on the back of him. So you get kind of a shape and kind of a, a general thing like that. For, but for the most part, they're not super in your face, which I think fits the horror theme more because normally you don't show the monster full. Um, you know, you just kind of, I, I will say here, by the way, these are very nice. Like they bend and it looks like they stay bent, but I, I think they were actually could be pretty good. They don't feel like paper, like no part, even the edges feel like paper to me, uh, which I, I prefer. I like that. All right, let's put that back in. I'm just going to throw the dice in there for now, like a heathen. And let's look at some cards here. So we got some cards here, some cards here and some bigger cards here. So we'll open one of each. Let's go in and start with, uh, oh, we're gonna start with the weapons, you kidding? Is that even an option? All right, Here we go. Hey, you know what? This is going a little bit smoother now that I'm not struggling. <laughs> I spoke too, I can't even grab it. Spoke too soon, huh? You know, if, if you guys wanna like, I feel like I need like 
special accommodations here. If, if you guys can make that like little red tab I can pull um, j just for me, uh, like like I, like I had, uh, you know, difficulties, because I do, um, that would definitely be great. So here's some of your, your weapons and equipment. Again, like nothing's bright here, right? Like it's still kind of very muted. There's some highlights. You get the shape and kind of what's going on, but you're not getting a lot of brightness and, and uh, cheeriness out of these. Uh, which is fine. The feast begins. Oh my gosh, it's a, a critic putrefaction. <laughs> Forsake hope, yes. Is there any dismemberment room? Your skin is crawling. Yeah, these sound terrible. Love it. Uh, on the back, you know, just kind of, again, general things. I do like the screaming face kind of hint there. That's very cool. All right, take one out. I will say right now, this is thinner than I'd like. I would like to see this um, even just like a couple micron thicker, I feel like it just it if the they're they're a little on the skinny side. The quality of them is good. Um, if if they were a little bit thicker, you would you, you, do you kind of see how it doesn't like sit straight anymore? Like it's just kind of I guess that's probably a bad example here. Here's something sort of straight. Um, you, do you see the little bow there now? Right there, right right here. So that is just for me doing that. Now, this is, again, it's not gonna like crease or anything like that, so it's gonna bend, and you can bend it the other way. Um, but preferably, and you can see it kind of slightly recover, but I would like these a little bit thicker. Um, that being said, there's a lot of cards here, and I don't know how big the stacks go. You don't want one like falling over everywhere, but thicker would have been a little bit better if we could have sprung for one thing. If there was one more stretch goal, instead of a miniature, I would have liked those to be thickened up a little bit. This looks actually bent um, because, again, the longer you get, the more it's going to affect it just from the wrapping. So, in fact, yeah, there's a little bit of give here. Maybe I can put this on something flat, too, and show you. Um, so holding it like that, do you, do you see that? So it's bent in the wrapping, especially this tight wrapping like this, this can happen. Um, again, especially if you have skinny cards. So ideally we have thicker cards here. Um, I, I, I'd feel a little snobbish saying, you know, well, hey, I paid a lot of money here because I, I did pay a lot of money for this, um, but I got a lot of stuff too. So, you know, you just kind of have to, and I realize they have to make money too, and they got to spring for this really fancy, thick uh, wrapping, which I gushed over already. And every time I interact with it, I do. And you know, so that's part of the thing too. You, a lot of people give me um, a little bit of crap about how in depth I look at this kind of stuff, but this is my first experience with the game. I haven't played the game. I haven't read your rules. I don't. Your game could be amazing. Right now, I don't know it. Right now, this is what I know of your game. And to open all this, it's going to take me a long time. And so if I spend, you know, two hours opening this thing and really looking through everything and I don't like it because, you know, I'm frustrated with the skinny cards and maybe some cheap plastic or something like that, or the box doesn't open well, or, um, yeah, these, these are way too skinny. Um, once you, especially you get, you get like long and skinny like this and skinny thickness, I would have liked these thicker. Uh, that being said, uh, I like seeing, look at that, each person gets their own. You're not trying to share two. A lot of times we'll do two for each side of the table. This is like your your helper kind of uh, things here. It looks like your player boards. Um, I, ideally, that means you're not really shuffling or manhandling this a lot, which is kind of nice. Maybe these as you're flipping them back and forth, but for the most part, I think we're pretty good there. Um, let's see, a lot of text, but you can read it all clearly. I like that. Again, very dark. Okay. All right, you know what? It's miniature time. It is definitely miniature time. Let's go to the main ones. We'll get to these guys. Because I wanted to talk a little bit about why I like the black here. So let me zoom in here. Focus. Okay, so why do I like black versus clear? Well, when you get a clear one, I don't have a good example here. I don't want to go get another game real quick. You guys have all seen them, though. Um, it's hard to tell shape. So if I take all of these out, now you're going to see me struggle to put them in. But um, uh, my point is this. I can see the shape. Oh, my gosh. I'm way too... I'm, uh, you guys don't even know what I'm doing. What am I doing? Okay. So right here, I've taken these out and, and you can see the shape very clearly 
in black. If this was all clear, and so this was clear, and this was clear, and I could see through everything, it's hard to tell the shape. You can get stuff like this a lot. So I could tell this is up here and this is up here, but in general, the shape kind of gets lost when it's black. Um, and in fact, you could probably even like spray paint the, the clear ones if if it's worth it to you. It's probably not not to me, but um, you can see uh, just the shapes a little bit more clearly. And it tends to, in my opinion, help a little bit uh, set up everything, which is kind of nice. I feel like she would go there. No, he's gonna be somewhere over here, over there. He's crouched, he's gonna be there. He's tall, he's gonna be there, and he's gonna be there. Okay, so, you know, again, I just did that live, so it's whatever, but my point is you can see the shape, and especially with this one, it's fairly generic. They go in rows, which is kind of nice, but some of them, like, especially um, in the in the, in the the box over here, these kind of custom ones, if you get a whole bunch of those, it can be more confusing. Not as important here, but, all right, let's, let's look at that. Let's actually start with the characters. Let's start with the characters. Change the zoom in a little bit. And again, you will, as always, see this at the end in a nice, crisp, well-lit kind of uh, round table. You're gonna spin, I'm gonna spin them and you're gonna see them really, really nice. This is just me talking about them. Right now I can tell you, I like this miniature. The creases on his kind of uh, tank top here look fantastic. I love his necklace, it is defined there. His facial features are good, he has a profile. Um, his nose doesn't come out super much, but maybe that's just him. Um, his his uh, uh, seam line here touches his ear, which is defined here. The assembly, so this this arm here was added on, is actually really, really good for what they had to do um, that could have looked really bad. Uh, I like the little bit of a base here. It's kind of nice. A little bit of cleanup there. The difference between his muscle definition, like a natural kind of flow, and then his kind of armored boots here, I think look really good. I would like to, like this, this looks fine to me. Um, his, the end of his gun looks a little bent here, but uh, for the most part, the gun looks straight, like this whole thing isn't bent. Um, and this is all PVC. There's no ABS here at all. Uh, so that's actually quite good. I like him. Let's look at the lady. So again, with the boots, I don't know if the boots are a common thing or what. I, I, you know, I don't know yet. Am I in a good zoom? Can you guys at least see what I'm talking about? Yeah, I think you can. All right. Um, again, the creases here are really good. Finger detail is there on both the open and closed hands, which are good. This is not a general cup. It's kind of a um, you know, like she's curling her fingers a little bit there. That little touch adds so much life to it. Now, nobody walks around like this, right? You're gonna have a little bit of a more natural kind of curve where they're curved in a little bit. And that's exactly what she's doing. I actually wouldn't be surprised if the sculptor used some kind of uh, reference photo uh, just because of how realistic that is. It's a very subtle thing that most people wouldn't think of doing. Um, but it, it just, it helps sell the miniature a lot more. Just that tiny little bit of curl, right? Cause you're just kind of relaxing your hand versus, you know, you're not going swimming. Um, so that's kind of the difference there. I comment that on a lot. Another thing I comment on a lot is using up the entire base and she is completely edge to edge, which I appreciate. And she's also kind of hanging off of it a little bit, which again, I love to see. Um, it, it just, it's a very dynamic pose. I like how she, this knee is bent in more, it's not very symmetrical, and yet her torso's turned a little bit and she's looking that way. Um, I like that she's holding uh, this arm out differently than this arm, this one's more forward. Like she's spinning, you would kinda, your shoulders would move and with the shoulder, the arm would follow. Uh, just a great, well, like, I feel dumb gushing over a, a, just kind of a generic, you know, normal looking chick, but, it's so, the attention to detail and the realistic sculpting in here is really, really, really good. So if you sculpted this, congrats to you. This is um, uh, one I, I appreciate on many levels. Um, and again, I feel dumb commenting on a slight turn of the fingers, but it really adds a lot. It adds a whole lot. Um, detail wise, the palm is not very well sculpted. There's a little bit of the thumb but the, um, the, this part here isn't really, um, it's, it's pretty much flat there. So it, but otherwise, like, again, how it's, 
uh, around her shoulders there because again, she's turning that. Just, yeah, it's a great mini. I'm probably talking way too much over just that one. I really like that one though. Okay, so here we have kind of a generic one. This is a complete standing straight in the middle of the miniature. This is kind of what you'd be used to seeing in general. Um, so hopefully they can add some character somewhere else. Uh, he's got like a little backpack thing going on there. Uh, the uh, hair sculpt is actually quite good. Um, okay, so he has a mask. I was like, he's missing a mouth, but he's got his mask on. It looks like he's looking at some kind of tool, getting something ready um, and holding uh, something else. I can't even tell. I'd have to look closer at the art to really tell. Um, very kind of baggy pants. This is the kind of stuff I see sometimes where I feel it's maybe overly baggy. Um, I've worn pants before and they are not that wrinkly typically, at least not all the way down, like maybe at the bottom. But if, if you're, uh, you know, upper, even behind your knee is wrinkly, you might have too big a pants. He must have a really good belt on. Um, but you know, in general, th this is fine. Again, it's, it's a much more subdued miniature. It's hard to get super excited about it. Um, if if I were to, you know, again, like I'm going to do everybody's job. If I were to add a little bit more character here, I would actually make him with his neck leaning forward. Like he was looking really intently into this. Um, you know, kind of like, you know, you're really kind of leaning in there. You guys can't see my face, but I leaned into my hand. So there you go. Um, it's kind of like really looking there. And perhaps that she dropped this instead of clutch to the to the kind of the upper abdomen, not even really the chest. If you had maybe pulled this up, that would be where, you know, like clutching it to your chest. Otherwise, having his arm kind of back this way, same same turn here. So this would be a sharp angle back and then holding it kind of to his side and close by would make him seem kind of like he's holding it close and maybe gripping it hard because with that bent elbow there, you could kind of um, show that I think a bit more. I do like the kind of general curve here. I think that's pretty accurate. But uh, anyway, that that's what I would do. I'd like to see maybe a little bit more there. All right, so looking at maybe just one more here. Um, this is, again, again with the boots. Uh, I, I dig the boots here. And this is kind of like a, a the jacket here looks really good. This is very much like a kind of a sassy doctor kind of thing. You see the stethoscope here. And I think it's just because her hips kind of moved over here. She's kind of holding her kind of satchel thing to the side right against it, which makes sense because her legs out here and kind of pointed out. And then she has that arm out as well, which is a very kind of very casual look, right? Which I think, is, and then, you know, with the coat open too and, and stuff like that. But I don't know who their manufacturer is. Again, again, I think it's Star City Games, which gets to do great stuff. If not, whoever this is does the great stuff too. The hair sculpted very nice here. And the fact that they got her fingers um, just kind of around this is actually quite good. I'm assuming... I'm assuming that's a syringe by the looks of it. it I think that's way too long for a cigarette, but uh, just very, very cool there. Again, I like that um, her shoulders are actually slightly bent like that because with this up, the shoulder would kind of move up a little bit there. So it's it's kind of at a slight angle. Facial details look good. Again, she's got a profile. Uh, she has a clear neck, which is good. Yeah, I, I again, very, very good. A lot of these are just really good. And, and, and again, I, I talk about the fact that at this scale in pure PVC, no ABS, and you get individual fingers like that, wow. Like that is really, really good. All right, let's so look at some monsters, huh? Maybe you guys wanna see some monsters. What's this guy going, huh? What's this guy doing? I don't know. So again, assembly, this is all assembled here. This is perhaps a bit more just because this is all wrinkly and this is a straight line, right? A straight line here. Um, ideally, this would have been, so see how like this is not straight? Ideally, the straight line would have been right there in the front chest here. Um, that being said, very little gap. Um, so it's it's not so much that you're seeing a gap, a tiny bit of gap here. It's just that it, it, it's an obvious artificial line compared to the sculpt uh, is, is I guess what I'm saying there. But it makes sense because this whole piece is coming out like that. Um, that being said, again, very well done. I haven't looked at the bases here. Their bases are solid. Um, when I took them out, I didn't notice any wobble at all, which is very nice to, to kind of see. These are great. These are really good. I've, I've been thinking a little bit about, um, I guess, just style. Um, you know, you look, I was looking at the art, right, and kind of commenting on how it's kind of dark and then splashes of color. Uh, 
if you wanted to paint these quick, I imagine if you painted them in that style, that'd be interesting. So this is probably the worst assembly I've seen here. So there's a little bit of a gap here. It's, you can't quite go all the way in. So I can't quite just hold the miniature up with this, but it's pretty darn close. Like that is a sizable gap kind of all the way around. Let me get closer for you here, um, which yeah, is, is what it is. Again, assembly here too. And again, a little bit of a gap here. And actually this was assembled too. This is several pieces assembly to here as well. It's really like this. And then, man, he's got like a formed butt. That dude is like working out. Um, a little bit of flash around the fingers, but I do like the individual fingers. The claws that he has out are really good. I love the actually that he has no face. Uh, so design wise is really good. There is some texture here on the tentacle, which is kind of nice. Uh, it, it's kind of minimal, like it's not super aggressive. It's not like this folds here or anything, um, but a, a, maybe a nice little touch. I don't know how well that'll actually show. It seems a little shallow for a wash. Um, I guess I'll have to see. Um, but yeah, the splits here are good. It, like his little kind of tendrils and stuff poking out there. Yeah, that's a cool mini. All right, let's look at, let's look at whatever this thing is. So again, assembly here on the lower jaw. Um, or, or I guess really it's this whole front part here. I love the spine back here. That's great, especially with the like outgross, um, which are great. I love the curl here. I hate painting curled things like this, but that's all right. Another assembly here, though because of the kind of patchwork here, see all the lines, um, this I think works. Like I wouldn't even fill that up. I bet that'll just be hidden, especially when you paint it. Um, if you don't paint it though, you do get that shiny glue. There is some very fine, very fine texture here that I think is too fine. It's too washed out. It's not really going to show up super well. I'll have to uh, do a, a highlight out of a paint where I just dab it to really make that pop out. Otherwise, it's just going to look like a solid color, really, like some very slight texture. Uh, the kind of veiny kind of things here are really good, though, too. Just that kind of fanning in between there. Uh, teeth are good, and it has a gum line, too. So gum line plus teeth, that's actually very good. Uh, some gum line teeth here. And then on this side, it it kind of loses a bit of the detail. It looks kind of solid there. I wonder if it's all of them, just that one. Yeah, so, so here there's a very obvious tooth right there. And then on this guy that I just happened to pick out, he's kind of missing that for the most part. Not necessarily miscast per se, just a, you know, a little lackluster. Uh, it's a very tiny detail that can get kind of lost. Okay, looking at his feet, I see toes here. I don't see toes here. That might be on purpose, though. Very skinny legs. Um, that being said, he's pretty solid. This is a good mix. This is a good PVC mix that I'm pretty happy with. Uh, I love that these are so out, like they're coming out, almost like they're they're like going towards their victim, their target, which is disgusting, and I appreciate that. I like the too wide a mouth with a sharp point. That's a... Jeez. A nice detail. I like that I could drop him and he doesn't break. Uh, good assembly here. There's some really good assembly here, actually. Some slight mold lines. Not a whole lot of cleanup even involved too, here, too. You know what? These are going to be a joy to paint. These are just going to be pleasant. Um, all right, looking at this guy. And again, it's so hard because everything's so deformed. It's like, well, he doesn't have a lot of face detail, but maybe he's supposed to like half melted pregnant maggot man or whatever the heck's going on here. Um, thin like exposed spine there is unsettling, which I like. Uh, the offset arms are very good where there's one extra arm. I would have almost liked, if he's only gonna have it on one side, if it had been like a pygmy arm, I would have liked it maybe a little bit smaller, but it, it, it it's whatever. I do one, two, three, four. Five. So I, his palm is kind of, see how there's these two up here, which are a little bit different. Yeah, I'm like out of focus, I apologize. It's like two out of here that are out of focus. Um, I like the very split rib cage here. Again, very well designed. The kind of pigeon toed kind of stance he's got there. Very thriller kind of stance here. Um, and yeah, that's like half his face is kind of melted. But again, I think it's on purpose. Looks cool. Uh, looking at this guy. Yeah, he's just kind of classic uh, tooth, claw, slug, nastiness dude. Um, but again, I like the lopsidedness. I like how it's almost like twisted. Right, so this is kind of going in like a swirl almost. Um, just enough as asymmetrical design to really kind of upset you. Um, like how there's little bulbs here and there's none here. It's much more fleshy, kind of stretched. 
Um, that little bit annoys the crap out of me and I almost, it's uh, so unsettling, but that's kind of the point. So I'm okay with that. And then look at these little guys. Uh, no base on these guys. These guys do not get a base. It's kind of an interesting choice. And uh, I will sort of make it easier to paint the bottom of them. I like these guys. These are like the head crabs of this universe. I love the lower jaw. Definitely an underbite there or an overbite or whatever. Uh, the teeth are actually well defined on there, especially the big one in the front. <laughs> these guys are cool. I dig them. Like, I like these guys a lot. Now let's get a bajillion of them. Okay. All right, let's look at the last bit. And then guess what? We finished the core box. My goodness. I don't know how you guys put up with me. I've discussed at times doing like a two-parter and then I've just ended up saying, no, that's dumb. Uh, you're either going to watch it or you're not. You can pause it. You can, YouTube remembers where you watch it and you can watch them a week difference. You can stop caring halfway through. It's whatever. I mean, I'm not, you guys do you. I just want you guys to have a good day. If that means watching me unbox a ton of Cthulhu-like, you know, underwater Bioshock crap, then that's fine. If not, maybe you're busy playing or playing your own copy. I don't care. That's fine. Let me know what you're doing. Why, why are you watching this? Why? I'd love to know. Punch the face. See, even that little crap kind of annoys me. All right. Let's see here. This guy has a few mouths. Again, with the asymmetry, definitely kind of twirling down that way. Uh, I love the, the tentacle hands. That's cool. I, I look at that. So these are curled in. So he's just like pinchy pinchy. Um, a little tiny kind of baby soft hands here. I like this one a lot. Uh, this is coming out there. Uh, another arm here. This one's cool. I like this one. Uh, the only thing I will say is I don't necessarily like, so this, first of all, has some flash, but if you were to open that, this is very similar to this. It's it's almost the exact same kind of pinchy pinch. I would like something maybe slightly different between those two. Um, but otherwise, teeth look good, wrinkles are good, and that's, that's a disgusting guy. I like him. All right, this uh, thing... Love the arms, love the folded in arms that they're holding and supporting itself is kind of neat. Uh, is, is That almost looks like a foot, which is kind of cool. It's like a random foot coming out here. <laughs> uh, assembly here could be better. That'll have to be gap filled if you're gonna paint that for what it's worth. Love the hold the jaw open uh, kind of uh, face here. That's nice, I like that a lot. A little tiny face there, a little bit of a line cleanup. Um, I like that it only has three fingers. Um, bone spur thing out the shoulder is cool. Um, more f fingers here. Oh, here's another foot here. So there's like a foot there and a foot there, and they're both on this side. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, that's a cool one. Ah, uh, splayed wing dude. Oh, look at that. Look at that. He's like uh, one of those like centipedes that just like walk both ways. Like, which way am I going? You don't know. Is it my tail? Is it my face? Which one's which? Oh man, I'm so confused. Uh, I like the kind of non-uniformity kind of pock marks here. That's, again, unsettling and cool. Big claw mark there. Um, I like the, this the little tiny hands here, even tinier claw things here. Most of the big hands look like they're coming out of the wing, which is cool. That's just a neat one. Which way'd you go? There you go. And finally, we have this dude who... Uh, yeah, he's disgusting. What can I say? Uh, the, the, the rolled kind of ridges here, the like flabby, whatever gross things here that are, can actually pick up and like have little things are awesome and gross and I wouldn't want one on me. That's yeah. The t layers of teeth, classic. Yeah. This is just a cool one. I like it. I like it. All right. That is the core box. Let's move on to the next one. Now, I will say that these next ones will go quicker because, um, you, you know, like I've, I've punched out, you know, to, like you, you understand how, how these things work, right? I mean, you, you guys are, you guys got it. You guys aren't dumb. You guys know what's up. Let's see if we can even put this back together. Now, see, like, how did this work? Like, that's not even... I'm just gonna have to do this. We'll, we'll figure, look, I'm missing a die. Oh my gosh, what a mess! 
All right, come on. I just want to stay slightly organized. Mainly because I've done this so many times and every now and then I'm going so quick that I don't remember what's in what box, you know? And so just it's just a mess. And that goes there. Let's take... You know what? You guys want to see the... Do you guys want to see one of the new stuff? Okay, we'll do it after this then. <laughs> Encountered expansions. Let's take a look. Uh, again, same kind of back as the other ones. Okay. A little bit here. And then we'll... Come on. Come on. I'm going to have to zoom out a little bit for you guys so you can at least see a little bit of this. There you go. This is much harder because this is so thick. It does not um, just kind of fall apart. It's nice. It's just harder to get into. All right. And there we go. Now, I don't know if you noticed or not, this is not quite an all-in. Uh, there's uh, some doodads and some alternate art and stuff like that that I just didn't spring for. Definitely all the gameplay, though. I got that here. Okay, so this is part of the uh, stretch goals. Remember that because of the kind of IP infringement that you get in stretch goals often. I'm not going to open these up. You you kind of know the characters, and I've already opened the cards and told you plenty about what I think about the cards. All three sizes here, plus even the uh, the to the uh, oh yeah. See, look at that. So you get like one tile and some tokens in here, separately wrapped. Oh, I kind of like that. It's kind of nice. Um, all right, let's look here. Let's see how that turned out. Uh, anytime it's wrapped differently, sometimes I wonder if, like, oh, did it, like, warp? Did it, did it, oh, yeah, so see, so this is way more warped. Look at that, I got, like, a little little bonus right there. Way more. So this is actually, let me get something kind of, yeah, I don't know if that's actually flat. And let me get the box here. And then I'll, just this corner, I'll hold down. All right. So do, do you see the the warp here? There you go. That's the warp I'm talking about. That's unfortunate. So what I'm gonna have to do is place it that way, place some heavy stuff on it and pray, and uh, maybe offer it some like incense or rice or something. I don't know, what, 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 do you, what do you do to the cardboard gods? I don't know. Move that there for now. All right, let's look at what we got here though. Again, some expansion probably just, gosh, I swear. With some scenarios or something like that, maybe some new rules, whatever. Okay, nice lid here. Is it glued? Is it glued? It is. It is. Come on. Come on. Work with me. Man, why do they have to do it on the on the like the side? I'm okay with. Look, look at that. That's just gross. I can get some like goo gone or something. Get off of here. Go away. Get off my finger. This is stupid. There we go. Hate tape, man. Like, I, I get it, but I hate it. And don't put it on the lid. This is too long. <laughs> Man. Look at that. It's all split in half now. I have to tell my wife, oh, like, okay, what, what, what do I clean this? Because I'll just try Windex is what I'll do. That probably won't, won't work for anything. All right. It's like stuck on me at this point. Okay, whatever. So I will say here, and actually I wonder if the lid, yeah, so just the core box got kind of the black treatment. I know it costs a little bit more. It's pretty insignificant, but with this many boxes, insignificance adds up. I get that. That's fine. I'm fine with just the core box having it. You know, we're not going like a super like boutique premium artisan kind of stuff here. There are other games for that that you get uh, less stuff for just as much. Get some more clip trays. Again, all in Ziploc bags, which I do appreciate. I don't remember if the other ones had blue. It kind of bothered me if maybe they used different plastic bags. If I was buying a retail game though, this is how all the miniatures, I'm sorry, figurines would come in. All right, let's not dump all of them here. So what do we got here? We got a, uh, like an open egg thing. I love the texture here. That's cool. Oh, yeah, let me zoom in here. Let's see what it is I'm looking at. There you go. 
All right, so there's kind of that great texture. This is gonna take a wash and a dry brush, like nobody's business. Uh, another thing, just stuff, whatever. Uh, the kitty, gotta have the kitty. I like the pose of the cat. I like that there's a little bit of basing there and uh, base is flat. And then we got the other kitty because it can be hero or bad guy or character or bad guy. And then you got a whole bunch of whatever this token is again. I, I forget. It's been so long, guys. You know, I mean, and not that it was like super delayed or anything. I just it's just been a while. Oh my gosh! All right. Um, the one thing I, I guess I don't like about this per se is having the cats in separately. Additionally, um, I think in the um, Monstrum box, there'll be a place perhaps for all these. Um, this is fine for now, but if I were to paint these, um, this would ruin any paint job. I couldn't store it like this. I'd have to find some other way of doing it. Um, all right. Let's do it. Uh, this guy, kind of similar to the other uh, tentacle guy, except instead of a tentacle, it's a tongue. Uh, he's very tall. Gosh, what am I doing? Um, and this is very, like, it, this is a, a quite more interesting one. It's very humanoid, um, minus the whole head thing. Um, and, but then these kind of, like, uh, you know, arm guard wing things are, are, I don't know, they're just throwing me off. Like, like it's a cool design. It just, it just seems so different. I love the kind of waist here with kind of the the outer layer here. That's actually kind of cool. A little bit of spikes here. Um, almost seems maybe a little fish-like. Maybe it fits for like, you know, a deep, a deep madness kind of thing, right? Where you're underwater and all that. It kind of works. This guy, I like him. Um, so again, this kind of pregnant kind of teeth thing going into the stomach. Classic. Um, webbed fingers here, uh, tentacle leg, you know, and then a normal leg here is nice. Assembly is actually pretty darn good. Um, probably about as good as you can expect here. Love that back kind of growth thing here and how they're kind of intelligence. This one's turning over um, and his mouth is open. I appreciate that as well. Those are cool. Jeez, I'm trying to unbox here so I'm falling randomly. All right, this guy, uh, you know, again, maybe f a little bit more generic, though I appreciate the back ones and how the, I actually just like how droopy this one is. It just seems weird uh, going backwards like that. I like the kind of whatever pucker hole thing it's got going on there. Um, oh, look, there's like a whole, several mouths here and mouths, mouths everywhere on any kind of tentacle thing. Uh, the fins, again, give it a little bit of kind of an ocean vibe to me, which I like. This guy is great. This is like the liquor. Oh, what were they? Uh, Silent Hill was it that had these things? Like big liquor. I don't think it was Resident Evil. Maybe it was Silent. I don't know. Either way, I'm thinking like PlayStation One stuff on here. But they would have like these like liquor things with the super long tongues, um, which which were super frightening. I like the barbs on it too. The texture is great. Like how big and open the mouth is. Like it's dislocated. No eyes work. Um, Assembly here, fairly good, though. I don't know what's going on there. I'll have to clean that up, that's for sure. Uh, yeah, this is a cool one. Slightly exposed spine. Nice. like it. Get over there. All right. Well, you know, this is, I mean, it's bound to happen. Here's Cthulhu. Um, I, I'm actually, I would be okay if he wasn't included at all in this game. This is one of the reasons I backed this. Um, I don't know why I'm saying this in an unboxing video. Dude, who does this? Um, <laughs> Sometimes I feel stupid. <laughs> anyway, whatever. Um, I actually liked that it was like Cthulhuism stuff, but it wasn't overt. Here's Cthulhu. It's a free IP property. We can throw him in anything now that everything was because there was like a bajillion of them. It's kind of what made this a little unique in my mind. Um, I'm okay with the little kind of homage statue thing. I think that as long as that's the limit, I'm okay with that. This dude's freaking sweet. He's got like very oddly textured wings. Like I don't even know... Very oddly textured wings with kind of the, the kind of draping tentacle stuff, whatever. And then, of course, tentacle hair and tentacle uh, mouth and several eyes and otherwise fairly humanoid, but kind of scaly. And then, of course, his feet are all who knows what. He's got a tail. Um, smart that they attached it to the hand. And it looks like pretty good. Sometimes you'll get some a lot of like kind of fake 
filler in there, but that actually seems to work pretty good. He's cool. I like him. This thing, one of my favorites. Uh, this is actually one of the reasons I backed the game. When I saw this, I'm like, what the heck is this game? I need to look into this more. Um, because that dude is like fully off, but still kind of like holding on and slightly attached. He's like falling out of this dude. Um, I like the kind of more demon looking dude looking there and you know, like here's a guy here who's seen better days and who knows what's going on there. And this is just a cool mini. What can I say? It's just, there's, there's so many different pieces to it that I like. Um, I, I can love that it's hanging off the base, kind of lurching forward. And I like that he's bending his knees both. I feel like he would walk like that too, like very squat, you know, like kind of like he, he never unbends his knees. Um, these are, or whatever. I'm just going to real quick. Oh, come on. Here we go. Very well detailed. I appreciate that. I like that it lays flat. That's actually going to look quite nice, I think. Those are going to paint up really good. Like a freaking robo suit dude. I really, really like this. I like that he's not super chunky. It's actually quite skinny here. I like the pose onto the rock they added. Um, the blade actually looks quite good. Uh, the detail on the ridges here are good. The visor looks nice and smooth. I'm glad they didn't end up with a mold line on that. You always got to, anytime you see a very smooth thing like glassy, glass, you got to wonder like, oh, are they going to put a mold light through there and ruin it? But they didn't. They did a good job on that mini. Again, probably not going to look at them all. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, Gordon Freeman here. I think, is this Gordon Freeman? Do we have Gordon Freeman? Yeah, hey, he's got the crowbar. Of course it's a Gordon Freeman. Come on, please. Um... Uh, I like that the hair is a lot different, so it's not Gordon Freeman. Like, I don't want to see Gordon Freeman in the game, per se. I just want to be like, that's the Gordon Freeman character kind of kind of thing going on there. Yeah, he looks cool. Um, and again, again, look at that. So again, the, the finger, his pinky is slightly raised, so he's kind of like... Uh, when, when you go to raise your hand, a lot of times uh, you'll, you'll slightly raise your fingers as you, as you move forward and just, just kind of like that, just in general. And so I, again, I just like that the, the middle, it, it's kind of like that, right? So his middle two here, kind of lower, um, just, just great design, really good, really well done. I like it. Um, I mean, come on, you, who you, you can't have, you can't not have an homage here. And uh, I think it's really well done. Um, face looks good. Uh, the hair looks good. Pose is nice. Um, this is actually quite, like the plastic they use is, is actually pretty good. I like it. Um, again, with the sassy, the one thing I will say is this is, um, it's not the same pose, but it's the same style pose, right? So hip out, leg out, hand on hip, um, which is whatever. Um, uh, I'm wondering, what is this? I forget what she's holding here. Uh, it, she's not looking at it, which is I, it kind of interesting, right? Uh, it kind of, you know, like almost just like she's taking a break to look at you and figure out what's going on with you. Um, I actually kind of like that it's bent, but her leg, her feet are still kind of close together. Makes it a little bit different. And of course, gun pointing straight out. Now again, the head turned down, looking right down the sights is fantastic. That's a very nice touch. She's not looking straight. She's actually kind of like, like I can see her squinting an eye um, if they could have pulled that off, just trying to like aim that shot, which is really, really cool. Um, the, the, the kind of different haircuts, nice. Um, the creases aren't exaggerated a lot, which I appreciate. Yeah, that's cool. Like it. All right, look at that. See, there's another one down, just like that. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That was no problem at all. I could do that all day, every day. What am I doing? Look at that. So you could just, I guess, do it without the lid. I don't, I don't know what I'm doing here. Let's try that again. I don't know why they sometimes do that. They always have like the uh, the cards on the outside. It's whatever. Whatever. All right. Making good progress. Moving right along. Maybe. Wait, there. <laughs> All right, you guys said you wanted to see the new one, right? I'm not gonna keep you waiting. 
All right, the Faces of the Sphere expansion. This is some of the new stuff. And I will say, I will say, you can tell this is new. This is a different design back here compared to the other two that I've had from the base game. This was their style. This is this style. You, you can notice the difference, how they list it as different. Um, even just kind of like how bright this is compared to how bright that is there. Now you can see the, the, the kind of the difference there. Uh, just slightly different. It seems a little bit brighter too. Uh, at least in, in general. Because this is going towards their Dawn of Madness, uh, which launches on the 19th, by the way, so getting close there. Well, let me try opening it this way and seeing if that works better for me. I think it might. I think it might. Just look at the Jelly Cube. I don't know what Jelly Cube is. Maybe somebody knows. Let me know in the comments. What's Jelly Cube? What am I looking at there? I don't know what these brands are. As far as I know, this is Dimension Games. All right. Open this up. Come on. So this is a different shape than all of them too. All the others are square. Are you know more square? This is definitely not square. Um, this is presented backwards to me, ideally. Oh, well, okay, never mind. It's not. It just doesn't really have a cover. Kind of interesting. Well, you know, we didn't want to put more art in here or add two pages, a front and a back, so we just printed right on the cover. Yeah, it's whatever. All right. Again, all their like saran wrap stuff is nice and nice and thick. Oh wait, what's this? Oh, this is just a. This is it. Okay, so it's just visage figures. Figures. I would like miniatures again. Um, more dice. Ooh. Considering the other ones were my favorite, this might be a room. It's not red, so it's inherently worse. But you know, that's that's all right. I guess you could do blue. Oh come on now. All right. I might even have to get rid of This is a nice feel, by the way. This is just very nice. Very nice. All right. Oh, it's not blue, it's green. Shows you what I know. Two tape! Oh, one, like one bro, what the heck? Maybe, that, maybe that's why there's two. I'm like, hey, this other, oh, come on. It's just a not break it off. Start cutting it. That's what I have to do. Okay. <laughs> this is like barely. <laughs> They're not definitely more haphazardly taste, uh, taped than the other ones I saw. All right, move. Well, I guess we'll put it back in. Huh? What do you say? Uh, we can take the lid off. All right. Come on. Okay. A lot of cards here. Um, again, skinnier than I'd like, um, but you know, same old, same old there. So I'm not gonna uh, bother you with those. The dice seem to be the same style, um, I like it, roundness and all that, and it's just different colors. They look cool. What can I say? I well, I guess what I will say is this is not white. Like this is an off white. Uh, <clears throat> oh, tickle my throat, which is kind of an interesting take. All right, let's get started. Start with here and go for it. Wow, these are so cool. Um, I will say these are very like godlike, right? I mean, the the size difference here. Let me grab. Do you, do you see the scale difference here? So uh, this is very much, and I think that's why I said like a visage, right? This is not um, maybe even necessarily something physical. This is just like this huge. Um, kind of manifestation of like the chair wouldn't like nobody makes a chair this big or anything like that um, I like the head by the way poking out over here as the book is being like flipped through by this uh, Entity here just very kind of a cool thing there multiple arms coming around everywhere uh, Locked in place stuck there. That's kind of neat. I really like that head though. I think the head's my favorite part there yeah, so these are getting kind of dark, kind of dark. Uh, so in this one, definitely has now morphed into, this is the guy with the chain, the briefcase, 
into some kind of like idolization. So head splayed open, drapes nastiness everywhere, um, you know, wounds everywhere. These like weird kind of demonling kind of things. They're kind of like the cherubs <laughs> is how I'm imagining them around this kind of just disgusting display. Yeah, here. Uh, okay, dragging the little doll. This is very kind of Slenderman-like a little bit here. Uh, the saw blade with the heads, not skulls, heads, is a nice touch. That's very interesting. I also like how the base is um, not... Oh, look, it's even textured on the bottom. It's not symmetrical, right? Now, what I will say, though, is I, I, I always get kind of bothered when they do a custom base for one and not the others. Um it just, I don't know, it, 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 it seems like I would rather them do it all, obviously, but um, the, I love the kind of display here. Uh, still kind of stethoscope wrapped around there. In fact, this is, like, it's styled, that's for sure. I mean, th if this wasn't swooping, it'd be way too long. Um, but it's in pretty good condition. I guess there's that. Still probably get it steam cleaned. All right, Mr. Uh... Uh, square head instead of pyramid head, I guess, here. Uh, dragon like half a dude here. That's properly disgusting. Love how thick and beefy like his, his feet are is really cool. Um, <laughs> a little bit of a crack there. Always appreciate a little bit of crack. Uh, <laughs> the gears here are very interesting. Very mechanical. These almost look like, uh, you know, beams. Like construction beams there. Chain looks great. It's a great chain. And everything just seems very secure. Um, which I'm I'm happy about. Yeah, that looks cool. Uh yeah, this is uh, uh watch out for that briefcase here, huh? Again, uh, like all the skin's gone. This guy has no skin anymore. Um, it's just completely gone. In fact, there's an arm here, right? Because he doesn't have an arm here anymore, so it looks like it's right here. Uh, he's seen better days. All right, this one, again, very cool. This is one of those, like, expansion. This is the, uh, it almost seems like a Dead Space kind of character. I can't remember if it's supposed to be or not. Based off that helmet, I want to say probably. Um, but, and I don't know who this chick is, too, but she's, like, really, really big and gross and nasty. And, uh, but either way, she's, like, grabbing onto him who's grabbing onto her that's like, oh, is it morphing into her? I don't even know what's going on there because he's overall fairly normal. I love these kind of twisty, um, textured, uh, gross. Um, they're very cool. I like those a lot. The smallest one here. Oh man, that's nasty. So she's just bent backwards. So, you know, the, <laughs> the so there she is. And, uh, yeah, yeah, she's had better days. Uh, definitely kind of given like a pregnant vibe, like this is going to burst out into something. There is a seam line all the way down the middle of her, though, which is super unfortunate. I would have liked to have not seen the seam line, obviously, because that is such a cool miniature. I love that she's not touching the back. Really like that. That is a great touch. The fact that she's, and she's still secure, like very well attached um, through these posts here. But I love that this is empty space. Definitely, if you're basing here, leave that empty. That's that's cool. I like that one a lot. All right, then we got, uh, you know, I mean, he's just going for the limbo championship here. Love the stuff coming out of the mouth. That's great, especially with exposed teeth. There's, like, no lips covering it. Very ragged shirt everywhere. Uh, third foot coming out there is nice. Tentacles coming out here and then back into the foot is gross and disgusting and cool. There's some, in fact, that seems to be kind of a theme. There's more here and here. It's kind of grown in and out of them. Disgusting. And I think everybody's favorite here. That's going to be so fun to paint. Oh, that's going to be cool. Okay, I say so fun to paint. This is going to be murder to paint in the back here. You might have to do some fancy shadowing, I think, here because otherwise, my goodness... But either way, you got the like fully sculpted. In fact, it looks like mine is lopsided. Do you see that? Like it could have been assembled a little bit better. I wonder if I can. Oh. Do, do, do you see this huge gap I have here? 
man, I, you know, if I can't fix it easily, I might ask for a replacement because I want to paint this one. I really do. I would love to any this because this is like a huge scale, right? So you can do a lot of fun stuff with the head that big. And it's like a solid chunk too, but man, that assembly. Super unfortunate. Um, this is really cool. And again, I love the scale there. In fact, that looks almost a scale there. Um, yeah, yeah. So so this is kind of showing you kind of how this visage, how it's out of scale, because this is the scale. Um, but you know, the, the hands coming out are just cool. Cool miniature. Man, the huge bummer about that is man, of all the ones he had to break, that's the that's the one you don't assemble well. All right, well, that's that's that expansion. We're moving right along. Moving right along, making some progress, making some dents. All right, let's uh, keep going, I guess, this way. So let's go for the Oracle's Betrayal expansion. This was, I think, gameplay-wise expansion I really wanted. Um, but God, God forbid I can remember why. Um, I think I ended up just kind of splurging and getting the Rise of Dagon as well and, and that sort of stuff. But, oh, jeez. Break everything in there. Hey, if it's still, if it's not jostled, that means you did a good job, right? This says 14 plus, but I don't know. With some of the, like the whole dude with his head splayed open. Um, depends on your 14 year old, I guess. Uh, certainly not gonna have my ten-year-old daughter playing this with us. It's just not gonna happen. <laughs> She's, I'm not, not ready for that talk yet. Not really for most of the talks yet. All right. Got a little bit of a again same kind of quality as everything. Got some more missions and whatnot there. I don't know if there's any rules. New investigators. Yeah, maybe a little bit. You know, a little bit of new rules there. That's kind of cool. This guy, his head, because the arm separates the neck, always feels like it's just like pasted on. Um, it, it's just because of how it's laid out, but it's really funny. Um, like <laughs> he's on the top of that too. Just cracks me up. It, it, again, it's because it looks detached. It's kind of a funny layout. All right, all right. So no, no new tokens or anything like that by the looks of it. Um, it's, oh, never mind. It goes there. All right. Got some more tokens here. Again, you see how like, so this is bent, but obviously the little tiny tokens in there won't be. This I don't know about. That being said, you've already seen a few. If it is, it is. If it's not, it's, you know, it's a whole lot you can do about it. All right. Open some, oh man, see with the tape. Why you gotta, sorry, this takes up so much time. So much of my, my viewers valuable time watching me pull too. By the way, does it gross you out when it's when it's like slightly yellow? It looks a bit peed on. I don't, maybe that's a weird irrational thought. I don't know how many people pee on uh, on tape, but when it's not quite clear, it's that little bit of little bit of color to it. it bothers me. All right. Get started on here. Just two here, so we'll look at that. So here's again the kind of the doll thing going on. So we know that uh, uh, he definitely got his uh, visage unlocked, kind of thing, which was cool looking. That Slender Man kind of looking one. And then the Doctor here. And again, instead of this way, they made it kind of play on the X so that they could just do a single cast here. So if if it had been like the art, like here. Um, his arm would have been coming out more and it would have been, uh, it would have had to split it off, I imagine. But here it's just kind of flat on there. I'm okay with that. It's, it's, it's fine. And with how his head's turned, um, it, it, it works just fine for me. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, great detail on the jacket, very crisp lines that I'm seeing. Uh, just, yeah, just nice in general. Stethoscope around the, everybody's is hanging it around their neck. Apparently that's, that's this thing to do here. All right, look at this guy. I like his claw. His claw's cool. Um, his mouth, he has one of the cooler mouths, I think. It's just kind of more visually interesting because it's kind of flayed open, almost like flat. And then you have this weird flab here and then the normal kind of uh, uh, female anatomy looking kind of stuff going on there. 
Uh, this is kind of cool. It almost goes into like a, a ball club thing, which is kind of interesting. It's a neat take on that. Yeah, he's cool. He's cool. So these guys, <laughs> um, I love the design. Like, I, I, I think this looks like a keg. Um, I, I love the design of like their helmet and stuff. You don't get to appreciate it a lot because they're aimed down. It's a very unique design. It, I just feel it's not as cool as it could be. These are like kind of comically big too. I mean, I get sculpt wise, it means it's fairly straight and they're not all bent in weird and stuff like that. But they just look to me like they were made by Acme Inc. or something like that. Like Wally Coyote is going to take them to clip something. Um, so not not I appreciate the uniqueness of it, uh, but I feel the potential is maybe a little lost by a little bit of silliness my perceive anyway so like it's like this guy right a little bit better um though again i i feel with the hands out like he's he's like going ah <laughs> um if you had pointed either hand i think more forward it would have looked more aggressive um than 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 how it is or even put this if you put this down with how this is whipped this way it almost like he's whipping his gun out which would work um to make it look a little bit more more menacing it it, it helps a little bit that his head's turned uh i would have just done something with one of the the arms my preference um but much much better than the other one i, I like that one um i didn't even look oh, i forgot to even look at this guy um this is a cool design uh, it does seem slightly Maybe it's supposed to be a little slanted, but I would prefer it to be straight. It kind of bothers me. Uh, very well done. Like this is all well done. Um, the the feet look nice. Uh, uh, these are nice and crisp. Little holes in there. This is barely noticeable. The post here, which is nice. I appreciate that because otherwise you would have had to attach it at the wheels, um, like from a mold itself instead of just gluing it, and that would have been messy. Um, this is gross, but my goodness, painting that would be a pain. Let's see what else we got. Uh, these little guys, these are fine. I like that they're missing their head. Um, that's actually really nice. And I like that this is resting on, uh, on his, uh, knee. It's, his, and this is kind of bent down, but his knee isn't touching the ground here. Um, so it's more of a ready to pose versus kind of a, I'm just going to chill here and catch my breath pose. Which doesn't make sense because he has no head. I guess he can still have breath, right? So his lungs. No, oh, I'm judging. Again, with the bent knee thing here. Um, it seems to be a common motive here. And the missing. So this is almost like an alt sculpt, maybe. I'm not sure. Anyway, that's that expansion. Powered through that one. You guys should be proud of me. We're proud of you, King of Average. Oh, thanks. Appreciate it. All right, let's see here. Was this. Like that? I don't know. I'm just going to do that for now. So I'm going to open it all up. I mean, ideally, i got these boxes I can put stuff in. Well, let's keep going. We're actually, we are making good progress. We are doing good here. Um, we're on the home stretch. We're definitely getting there. So I got this one here, the Rise of the Dagon. Um, I got the Endless Nightmares. And then I have the two boxes. And then I also have the Dawn of Madness miniatures. If you haven't seen that... And you're still here. First of all, congrats. Second of all, link in the description below um, where you can properly see me open all those up and look at them. Uh, those are the resin miniatures to Dawn of Madness. I don't have the game yet, but I will. That I'll be able to kind of preview for you guys during the Kickstarter. So you can know, hey, is it a poopy game or not? I'll let you know how poopy it is if it is. You know, maybe 0% poopy. It might be like 100% poopy. You never know. I don't know. I've never played it. Like, I barely know anything about, like, the, the, the gameplay. They've been kind of, like, I just know it's a lot different than this. Not thematically, but gameplay-wise. Oh, come on. There we are. Okay. Moving right along. Very similar to the other one. A lot of tokens on that one. A lot of tokens. And, uh, two tiles again. Okay. Uh, more ring to bases, more cards, more cards, more cards. 
I like the kind of bigger expansions. Like, like look at all this that they added in this one expansion. That is actually really good. A lot of expansions, you're not going to get, what, uh, two heroes and one, two, three, four, five different new enemies plus, you know, like, they're just, they're big expansions. They're not small. Plus, you know, the, the, the themed missions, all the cards and stuff. There, there are board games that are this big. That might just have five different kinds of enemies. The two heroes is kind of a little bit. Maybe they'd have a couple more heroes. But otherwise, it's it's not too far off of like a full game. But I don't know how many... So I dog on uh, Zombicide. Because a lot of times they'll give you... Um, so chapter three. So maybe three chapters. They'll give you ten, ten missions for the whole game. This is just three. So bad example there. <laughs> just Just varied enemies within that. Okay, now I want to say, and I forget who this chick is, but um, I, I, I think we could have had her visage, and I would have been interested, just because this is such a unique, like, it's, I may have to look, is the, um, it's a very unique pose for a, for a hero, somebody you can play, um, to not even be standing, um, but not like sitting in like a wheelchair, it's not like immobile, um, staring at a, like a, a, a Oh, a, looks like a ritual blade that she's gonna like kill herself with or some junk like like it's it, it it's I I don't I can't think of another game where that would even be an option you know I mean it's just I guess I can think of maybe a few that you could probably wing it I wouldn't be surprised anyway yeah so see I mean she's just like about to stab herself with that thing like she's not she's not all there so yeah I mean looking at this miniature it's again it's just like the heck very interesting um again i don't know how many people but again the fingers uh, sculpted one's out more so she's like kind of reaching out towards it um the firm grip on it staring right at it with her eye um it's just kind of an interesting take in general compared to her who again hand on hip that's very common here a uh, slight hip uh, turn here. It get very common here. I'm seeing that a lot on the females. I think the sculptor had a kind of a preferred pose perhaps there. Um, her hand balled into a fist though. Um, it gives this a lot. And her hood over, uh, by the way, very well done with the overhang here and her hair there. Um, but it, her, her bald fist adds a lot to this pose. It really does because otherwise this would be fairly, like if you just took that into account, I would feel fairly kind of, and maybe took the hood away, generic, but between the hood and the bald fist, I think that actually gives uh, enough character for me to be okay with it. I'm, I'm all right with that. Um, this guy's cool. I love his upturned face with his open hand and his heart and his other hand, like, this is my offering to you kind of thing. Kind of interesting. Maybe not super threatening, but an interesting pose. Uh, this guy is fantastic. I love, again, the asymmetrical melting of his face. He has sculpted eyes, which is very interesting. These things are all going away. Like, it's not looking at where he is, and he's just, like, rising up from the sludge with his arms out. All kinds of disgusting. This is a cool... I like this one. And very well assembled. Like, it's... I, I, will, I will still probably, you know, patch him up before painting, mainly because I think if you're going to paint him, you're going to do it right. But you could get away with not doing that as well. All right, this chick here uh, is really weird and gross and nasty, and that's exactly what you're looking for, right? Um, very weird kind of plated tail that almost doesn't match the miniature. Works in this case. In most of the games, I would say that's terrible. Um, yeah, just, just all wrong growth. Her face is completely messed up. I love how, again, these are like, like oh, I can see those moving behind her, um, which would just be super gross. And, of course, we have, you know, another, like, thriller zombie kind of thing. Uh, big leg out front. I am okay with that. Kind of lean him back. Almost like th his mutations are leading him. Um, and his face looks properly disgusting. Uh, again, maybe not super menacing, but cool nonetheless. All right. There's another one. Man. Oh, I almost was good just to rush through there like that. That's not even a rush. I'm not rushing. I'm just just talking. So I do, I talk a lot. I, I can talk like nobody's business. 
Got anybody to talk? I'm your man. All right, so we only have one more big expansion, a few small things, and then we'll get to the big boxes. This is the Endless Nightmares expansion. Open this one up. This is a bigger, a bigger expansion. It's actually fairly heavy. Open this up. Take a look here. Oh man, again, so thick. I love it. Like, this is just a joy to interact with it. Of stuff it. I don't know. It just feels premium. Feels nice. I like it. All right. More tokens. More whatever. Ton of miniatures. All right. Let's get let's get started on it. I guess, huh? We're gonna start right away. Tray number one. Fully taped all the way up here. Look at that. Look at that. All the way up here. Get that tape off my lid. At least the, the, the top of my lid, where you're to look at it. The side of it, you know, that's one thing, but this is... This makes it look bad. I don't like it. Especially when I can't even freaking get it off. Come on. I swear. Ugh. Just leaving all that residue and everything. This makes it feel a little gross. Come on. I, I see, it just looks gross to me. I don't like this colored tape. It's stuck on me too. I'm stuck with it. Hated and I'm stuck with it. At least it's only on two sides, I guess. <sighs> Alright, come on. Almost. There we are. Okay. One down. I'm gonna leave this out because there's more in there. Let's open it this way. All right, now see, see, look at that, see? So they went with it. So it, I don't think it kills the look, right? Like that still looks good. This looks good. It doesn't have to necessarily be fine. You can add some dimples in there. Keep them nice and secure, I feel. All right. Okay, and again, not gonna look at all this. Let's definitely look at uh, this. Again, no base, which is, I think, kind of cool. Just makes it fit in the art a little bit more anytime you can get away with that. Um, the underside, again, this is a part where you, you know, sometimes see a little bit less, but this is still fairly well molded, but in fact, it's just as much as the, the top, so that's fine. It's a little plain looking of a turret for, for my preference, um, but it, I mean, it works. It just it seems a little simple to me. Um, here's another kind of weird ritual kind of guy. Again, this is not a character a lot of people I think would be like, oh, I want to be that guy. He looks awesome. Um, though there was going to be that one person that this is their thing and they're going to love it. Um, but you know, it's, it's, it's whatever. See, I want to look at, uh, this one it looks interesting. Again, um, back stepping on a rock to kind of like mount your, you know, your, your, your position and then holding it really down. So you got, you got it really secure. If you held it up, it would move around a lot more. Assembly is okay. Um, it, it, it works. It's probably pretty normal here. Uh, open mouth is nice. Love the uh, the hair and the facial features. This is a cool mini. I like this one. Um, oh, let's look at this guy. This guy's cool. I like this guy a lot, actually. Um, very kind of classic look. The the painting schemes you could do on this glass and whether it's highly reflective or not, all that it would be very cool. If you're really fancy with a free hand and actually are artistic, you could even put a little face in there. Um, I could maybe do a smiley face. I don't know. I could probably pull that off. Um, the little rivets here are really good. I love the little barrels that are here. They're actually textured and kind of drilled in a little bit. Um, this is just a nice, nice looking mini. I like that one. Oh, let's see. So this looks skinny. Let's make sure this is going well. So again, very skinny, but actually straight. This ended up quite well. Very impressed. Very nice. I'm trying to see, I still don't think it's ABS. Yeah, it's still just PVC, uh, just kind of a separate thing. So she's got her belt and she's got these like, you know, weird short things here. I don't know what's going on here. That's kind of, oh, it's just that she has pockets here. It looks kind of weird. Um, I, I like the tanks on the back. Hair is well textured. 
Um, again, with the fist, anytime you ball your fists, you look like you're a bit more, you know, into a stance. Her mouth looks barely textured, though. Um, I think it'll work once you prime it. You'll probably be able to see a little bit better, but it is definitely closed mouth, that's for sure. All right, look at some of these. Let's look at the guys that deserved a... Uh, <laughs> I love the the spiraled kind of deep down hole thing, like you're staring into the innards of like it or something like that. Uh, very cool. Yeah, if you paint three lights in there, you're probably screwed. Okay, then we got the, the crab thing. Ah, I love his face. He's got a face. This is great. I like this one. Like this one was like, ah, it's another blob thing. And then you look into it, it's like, oh, it's good. See, this is gross right down here. You can actually look at that. <laughs> So you can go all the way through, and you see that? Um, that's cool. I like that he's like on these two little things here. There's a bit of a post here. Um, it would have been great to maybe texture that a little bit, um, make it a rock he's crawling over or something like that. But otherwise, those are really cool. we got these super contorted chicks here that are all sorts of... They're, I don't think they're feeling very good. It sounds like they're like in the middle of a transformation. It's kind of getting messed up. Um, Assembly-wise... You know, you do got these straight lines here, which are kind of unfortunate. A little bit of a gap here and a mold line right across there. I wonder if they're all like that. There's only a couple of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, so kind of a very weird mold line. I don't I don't know if, it, because of how smooth this is and the separation, I don't know if that's supposed to be a rock they're hanging over or if that's supposed to be their chest or I don't really know what's going on there. Uh, some more crab people if you wanted more. Here's some more of them, just kind of shoved in there. These guys, uh, okay, I like them, I like them. I love the the head, though, how long it is like that. And again, you get those kind of folds of, like, skin there is really gross. So some suckers and some, uh, like, holes in there and just kind of general grossness are kind of cool. They're, uh, they're inside of their mouth. To me, it looks a little plain. Like, it's it's very smooth. There's no texture there. would like to maybe a little bit of texture there. Uh, let's see. These guys uh, are... Uh, but I really like their gun. Their gun's pretty cool. Uh, otherwise, they have, they have a giant arm here. They're, they're, they almost look normal. I think the biggest difference here is, again, the scale. So if you look at the size, I mean, these people are like freaking eight and a half feet tall, which is kind of weird. You got a few of these, uh, like, grudges, I actually think they're called or whatever. Love the face. The huge open mouth face is really cool. Definitely kind of like a screaming thing there. The the ribs are nasty. The You see, like, tendons and stuff. And uh, this, like, one toe hanging up here, and, like, this foot is broken and backwards and gross. It's actually a really cool pose. And then finally, finally, you have this hand. <laughs> so again, it's this kind of a, at this point, they've just stopped being a person. You see some rib cage here. There's still a hand here, but that's not going to be long. And otherwise, it's just kind of this pile of nastiness. Maybe a fin here of some kind. Who knows what's going on? Those are cool. That's funny. Okay. All right. That is all of the kind of the the big expansions there. Oh wait 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 wait! I lied! I lied! I lied! That's tray one. I'm getting ahead of myself. There's more. So let's open these real quick. There's not too many here. There's not too many. These are all cool big ones anyway. We want to see those, right? I want to see them. Okay. Look off. It's interesting, they must have checked this several times because the tape would break. Like the tape broke on that one and they re-taped it. Uh, kind of interesting. I don't know what their factory process was or where they checked it and didn't check it, but that's kind of interesting. Okay. First things first, you got your doors here. These are nice and chunky, actually. They're not like hollow. I mean, they, they're hollow. You can hear that inside, but they're not like... The bottom is, is flat, uh, so they should stand a little bit better and not really shake around too much. Uh, these are cool. I don't even know what the heck this thing is, but I love the treads and stuff. Uh, they actually get pretty skinny, too. Those are neat. Sure, why not? I'm done with that. Cards, cards, more cards. 
I got these guys here again. So this is the same kind of guy that was down below. It's an alternate sculpt though, where now he's kind of raised up. I like that because that was a, again, a cool design. Oh, my wife is going to love that. That's, that's just a neat guy. I like, I like them a lot. Um, I'm assuming they're supposed to be like this. So I think all of these turned. There we go. None of them are broke, which is good because they are kind of a, again, it's one of the benefits of PVC. Even though these are skinny, they're a little bit flexible, but they still hold their position. They're just less likely to break, which is good. All right, let's look at these guys here. Um, I love his, his face to me actually looks a little silly. Um, maybe because it looks kind of like stroke face, right? Because this eye is protruding and this eye is recessed a little bit, but otherwise that's, that's fine. I love the texture. Like you can feel the texture on them. Uh, everything like even even the uh, metal is like worn and textured and see this is already like in you know de deflating and been crushed and depressurized and all the ar none of the armor is nice and straight nothing nothing about him is like pristine and new and, and nice which is again I think a cool idea looking at this guy also again this is sweet and cool um again kind of like the visage i've heard of this one essentially this person here their scale is completely different um but with all the kind of visages and you know are you seeing this as this reality kind of thing i'm fine with the scale difference i think for this game they can get away with it um and so i um i mean i'll have to play it and actually really see and it doesn't look like any of them are going to match the uh the, like, like the, the tiles are going to be all not not to scale as well. So I'm not going to make a big deal. Like that's almost the least of my concerns, I guess you could say. Love the beak here, by the way. This this little face here is really cool. That's really recessed. Um, the difference in textures, like all the different textures are great. Uh, and again, I love the kind of stuff coming off of the face there. Yet still screaming that mouth with the teeth is like perfect. <clears throat> <clears throat> all right so now this one <clears throat> oh excuse me uh i really like the uh the texture on the wings here are really cool very I like they're different than the other wings these are actually a little bit more traditional wings but then i love how this comes off the base like this is just spilling over the base which is really cool and of course it, i love the suction cups in there uh, let's see we got this guy here um this is this is great uh it, it just it's this weird the feet freak me out on this one which means mission accomplished job well done uh the uh, assembly here is lackluster this really needed to be pushed in maybe a little bit more uh to the to the right i think would have made it a little bit perfect but that would have added maybe maybe a little bit of gap here i don't know um but some touch up there and finally, and finally, we have, um, again, very classic kind of female oriented kind of weirdness going on there with like, who knows what the heck's coming out of there. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't think these are teeth. I think they're less like tentacles here. These are probably some kind of teeth thing. Um, though maybe they're even eyes. Who knows? I love the tiny legs. The tiny legs in here are probably my favorite thing because they're so big and bulbous. And in fact, around the tiny legs, they get really big. And then these itty bitty little legs, which just kind of crack me up. Uh, those are cool. That's cool. All right. There. Let's get to the big boxes, huh? Uh, actually, well, okay. We got a few small things, but they are small. They are small. Calm down. So we'll be able to see them. Let's put this back up and get the small ones knocked out of the way. go there we go and done all right you've already seen these i just got the extra one so each of them could have that because i think they give you half of the ones you need now I can do all scenarios with this extra one. I just like the whole, like, here's half. If you want the full one, do that. Like, anybody wants to mix 3D doors without 3D doors. That was kind of a, this is probably the jerkiest move they've done. It's not like a huge jerk move, but 
Um, I, I don't like the whole, this does most. It's why I didn't get the uh, plastic tokens. So they have a ton of tokens as you saw, but heck if I'm gonna mix plastic and cardboard tokens, that would bother me to no end. Uh, so I just didn't get them. I think they had two packs that got most of them, but I, I would want all or nothing for me personally. So uh, this, it, it, it actually to me doesn't seem super premium. It's quite thin. Um, this feels like an iron on. Um, so this, I will fully expect um, this to start like peeling off, you know, kind of clipping off or whatever. Definitely if you had to wash it, it would just be screwed. Um, it, it, it just feels very um, like th this material isn't, doesn't feel super nice. Um, kind of minimal stitching there. Uh, this feels very generic. I'm, I, I like it. I don't even remember. If, I don't think I paid extra for anything. Um, but if I had, I would be a little bummed about it. Um, I've, I've, I've gotten better. I've gotten worse too. So, I mean, you know, don't, don't get me wrong there, but if you have a chance to buy that separately, I, I wouldn't. All right. Um, I'm not going to open these up. I think you see, I'm going to, I don't know if I can or not. Can I, is, am I going to be able to do any scissors? Um, I just want to see the cards that come with it so you can see it, but I'm not going to really open them open them uh, so let's see so inside of here is where you get the different cards that you need for them and then of course you get the miniature and nowhere to put them in any box unless you get storage box which i did um i do love the whole book with tentacles coming open that's a cool design there and then for you know what i mean what what the heck what the heck come on let's look at this guy too Again, coming off of the base is very cool. I like that. Um, that's that's pretty cool. The so this is the first time I've really noticed this. Um, but to me, the scale seems off. His head here is just strictly better, bigger than his head there. Um, now, granted, people have different size heads, uh, but it just seems a little off there. They're about the same height. Um, he just seems chunkier in general. His, his hands seem bigger. Um, like, like, uh, his, his, uh, top of his hand is almost as big as his whole hand there. Um, and his feet obviously is in those boots, but still seem quite larger. His legs are much thicker. Um, so these are kind of, this is much more true scale. This is a little bit more heroic scale in my mind, a little bit thicker all around. Um, so something to keep in mind there. Again, I believe they did it. Uh, several different sculptors, and I believe they did by hand sculpting, not digital. So it's going to be an inexact science to begin with. And then, of course, if you're not super consistent for, from, you know, stylistic-wise with the sculptors, you can get some differences there. All right, next is the Drifter King, which is, I believe, again, something new, and it looks freaking sweet, so we'll do that. And then the boxes, I promise. I'm not trying to cheat you guys out. I just want to open, like, the content before a box. I mean, it's... And the, at the end of the day, it's just a box. Now I'm gonna try and figure out how to how the storage works there and comment on that. But uh, in in general, it's just a box. Oh man! Uh, so I will say, and this happens sometimes, especially with these lower things. Um, so I didn't get uh, a lot of the uh, epic monsters. Uh, they all look cool. It's just price point wise these were such a bigger deal. I wanted to make sure I got the big expansions before getting a single epic monster. That is nice, but it's different. Um, this is a completely different style though, um, it, both in feel, right? You, you can kind of see the, the difference of them even. Um, and of course in style of packaging, uh, much more colorful, uh, definitely not nearly as much black. Uh, it, it works, um, but it, it does to, to me, kind of stand out a little bit um, in, in, when it comes to consistency. And anytime you get these kind of open things, Oko Chronicles does this a lot with theirs too. You're going to rip it. Like it's so hard to open these and not rip it. Um, it and it's so, see there, I, I've already ripped it. Um, it It's really unfortunate. This is the, the least happy I can be as a consumer is getting these boxes. I hate, like this is stupid. It's dumb. I'm just going to end up there, finally. After I ripped it and got frustrated. That's not the experience you want me to have opening your drifter key. So ideally, we, we, I would. 
And I guess it's facing the back. I, did, I didn't know. Um, yeah, that's just dumb. Hopefully he's okay. Yeah, he seems okay. Um, ideally, again, it would be facing the front, I would think. Uh, just, I would prefer just a tiny box that you, I mean, you know, that you, that you open and close like normal. Okay, so looking at the Drifter King here, I will say he looks super cool and super, like, like, just a solid hunk of plastic. I've actually been kind of impressed with it. They don't like hollow it out in the middle even, which they can do sometimes. There is a kind of a monster seam line here. That's going to take, I think, the majority of my time cleaning it up. Uh, the suckers here are really cool. Obviously, the whole kind of design concept's neat. Um, very, I guess this is maybe a little bit thicker than I planned. Um, I, I mean, it works, but it this feels a little thick versus... A skin. It's a very, like it feels almost like a wool kind of a cloak, just based off how chunky it is. I love the the spine thing though, like this whole thing here. You can see it coming down here. Very cool. It does get a little muddy here, like it just kind of starts blending in a tiny bit there. Um, but otherwise, I'm not. I'm I'm seeing just nice crisp detail. I'm just trying to look, see if there's any other kind of problem points but no i mean that all this is nicely detailed here this is actually pretty good here um i love the the space in between the hood and the tentacles that's nice you didn't flatten that out this looks cool we'll need a little bit of cleanup on this as well but that's a lot easier than the texture here this is cool i like them i'm glad i got them so i do have an epic monster and it's a freaking cool one too i think uh, so looks like he goes in like that and then these go in there. And that goes in maybe maybe there like that. I don't know. And then I want to have him face the front like a normal person. And there we go. There we go. And now I'll have trouble opening it again. All right. Big box time. Okay, we're going to start with the Profundum, the smaller box. And this is for essentially all the components besides the miniatures. So this is just kind of... There we go. Um, for Ideally, I can combine all of this stuff into these two boxes, which would be super nice. So looking at the box, it's the same style, very dark, again with just a little bit of light, which I do appreciate. It's in the theme, I feel. Um, and it's, it feels very Kickstarter-y, right? The Dimension Games is not mentioned on here. There is no Dimension Games on here. There's no uh, Jelly Cube. There's no nothing. It's all just back here on the back corner there. And that, I think, is where it can stay. I know you're proud of your game. And uh, anybody who's getting this knows what it is and is willing to talk about it to anybody who does see it and be like, whoa, what's that? They're going to be impressed. Um, because a box like this is quite impressive. Again, I like their, uh, sorry, I may have just moved everything. I like their trays. I really do. So this is all nice. And they're all, it looks like it's all kind of, you can take them out. Um, no tape, which is nice. So they're going to stay kind of a little bit cleaner, hopefully. I don't know what's, I don't know what that's all about. Okay. Now this is the stuff, if you did not get the, Profundum here, you can kind of print this out. Otherwise, they stuck it in there essentially for free. Adds a little bit to the weight, but otherwise, you're just paying by volume pretty much for this. So in here is... Uh, kind of a mapping here, which is kind of nice. So, so you can have the... Oh, this is a different language. Hold on. Okay. Where's English? Here we go. English right here. So this tells you kind of where you can put dice and visage cards and standees and figure bases and um, all that kind of stuff, which is kind of nice. I appreciate the mapping. And here we have the easy mode for chapter one of the base game. So you can actually get through it. And I heard that's actually kind of hard clarification. So here's kind of like an uh, our Aranda kind of an update, some special rules um, for this kind of special mission. I think there might be one or two by the looks of it there, maybe. Um, it'll be kind of cool there. And again, it feels nice. There is a wonderful crease, though, all the way down there. But I'm actually not going to complain about that. 
And here we have a completely different than all the other glued, very thick plastic that's still ripping with the glue because it's freaking glue. Um, I don't know why this is different. <laughs> but look, it even has like a, kind of a special special thing there. So here you're going to get kind of that's your Cthulhu statue there. This is just some of the Kickstarter exclusive. I think these are again updates to what they had, I believe, but it's, you know, whatever. So I'm just going to stick it back in here for now. But as you can see, there's a place for Come on, for ev for everything. So, lot, lots of stuff there. Lot, lots to um look at. That goes here, like here. This goes here, like that. I'm just gonna put that there for now. I'm gonna not quite be flush, but that's okay. And that is the profundum. I have no idea what that means. Um, it sounds cool, which I think is maybe the main reason why they picked it. There may be a sub reason for an actual meeting, but. I think if I know. Set this down here. Get the big box. All right. Okay. This box is big. Okay. This is where all the miniatures go, and as you can see, it is quite large. And damaged. Let's see how much here shortly. I think it goes like this. Okay. All right, so huge big box. Um, I, I mean, it's it's just huge. It just keeps going. That being said, the lid only goes down to here, which I appreciate. If it went down all the way, it would be very hard to pick up, even with like a hole drilled into it. So damage-wise, I am seeing damage here, right? And I mean, kind of a just visual damage here, and then here it's kind of curved into. That's a huge bummer. This 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 was expensive. It's not cheap. It added more to ship too because of just how much space it takes. The whole reason I had that big box, as far as I'm concerned, um, yeah, this whole side here just got kind of. I'm so bummed about that. Really, really am. I wanted this to be nice, and in fact, like this isn't uh, straight. Like it's kind of curved in a little bit here. It. I mean, it, it still looks cool, but I mean, ideally this big thing you want to put on display and that's certainly not, it, it's less displayable. All right, well, let, let's look into it and see if maybe I cheer up a little bit here. Um, I'm actually going to zoom out even more here. Okay, so tray one, and again, you can pop these out, right? So that's... That's one spot there, like that. Here's a spot here, like that. And these are just, again, kind of separate stuff. And then there's kind of a, uh, this is not a lot of padding per se. Um, when it comes to like soft padding, it's actually kind of firm. That's so it actually kind of keeps its shape. But you can see all the different ones there. There's kind of generic, and I think it's kind of, kind of keep going down. So let's open this one out. This one you kind of get some some longer ones. Maybe this is for uh, you know like all those uh, ones that are just kind of loose in the bag or something like that. Maybe just put it in there. Um, but again, more here. So they're not special shaped. They look fairly generic. Um, so I'm assuming you just kind of figure out where to put them, depending on what makes sense to you. What is nice is you can just take these trays out and you just leave them in there, like on the table or something like that. I think that'd be kind of nice. Cause you don't want to just keep reaching in here over and over again and just grabbing this. Um, so yeah, more and more and more getting down towards there. They are easy to take out, which is nice. That being said, do you see how much I'm pushing on this? I worry like when there's a miniatures in there, how much that's going to affect it per se, if that makes sense. These are very deep. This is probably for our big ones and that's our last one. So then it's an empty box. So let's see how deep these go. So when this is out, 
right? So it's like this, and I have a miniature in there, and I'm trying to pull it out. I'm gonna have to push in on that. I'm kind of the only bummer there. I mean, ideally this is soft and it won't really affect too much, but all right. So that's that's the uh, monstrum box. Uh, getting kind of bummed about the the state of it. I mean, at least it's all together and everything. It's actually kind of impressive considering. But uh, yeah, that, that, that damaged stuff certainly sucks. And again, it's on the front. Like even if it had been on the back, that'd be a little bit better, right? Because it, I mean, it's the back. It's not really displayed. But um, this this is not going to fit in a calyx shelf, right? This is going to have to be displayed somewhere, um, unless you use it as like a nightstand or something, I guess. But whatever, there you go. All right, so we have the art book, and then uh, is the, kind of the round table view of everything. Now, I will say again, it was very smart to come on, might still have to draw a hole somewhere, but very smart to just put it the lid halfway down there. All right. All right, so the art book I need to do that now. Uh, this is kind of so I set this on my desk and then I set up everything so you guys can see. And I'm noticing here that it's. Do, do you see that? Uh, let me make sure it's in camera. Do you, do you see all that give? So there's definitely some some curving here. Um, it, 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 this feels super nice, like it's nice and smooth. The color looks really good, I like that. Um, hard bound here, the crease here seems really nice. But this is, makes me kind of sad. Now, it, it, I'm, I'm actually, you know, it, it, it's just here to sit at the table, but do you, do you kind of see the, the, the curve there? Now this is just fresh out of the packaging, but that's a... Uh, kind of sad. I'm gonna set it under some like heavy stuff. I'll probably put the hate um, you know, the board game Hate by Come On on top of this, and uh, that's plenty heavy, and it would fit like right here really good, and I think it hopefully, in fact, I'll probably tip it over this way and then do it. I've seen some other little scuff marks or whatever here, but I, I, back I'm far less caring. This is really the main thing, is that. But let's go ahead and get into it. So the art of Deep Madness. Now the art is kind of interesting in here, at least the main art, because it is very much... I want to say more subjective uh, or suggestive. Or, I'm not even saying words. It, it doesn't, instead of just putting it right there, there's your monster, it kind of gives everything a mood is kind of how I feel about it. So it's a little bit different of an art style, and I, I'm expecting to see that here, um, which which is fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, like This is actually like a location it looks like, but you see how like this doesn't match this, which doesn't, it's supposed to just kind of be like this kind of, moving kind of art piece uh which is i think kind of interesting it looks like there's different styles too like this is definitely digital right you can kind of very much tell whereas this looks far less digital look wise i'm assuming they all made it on a computer but um this is kind of cool so it looks like a ton of lore in here if you see all this i mean a ton that's great oh this is gonna be a really nice just to immerse yourself in the world and just kind of get tidbits of, look at that different specific characters it looks like. There's a mining facility there. Uncovering the sphere, kind of like the movie maybe. <laughs> um, that's really cool. I, again, I love, if I typically get art books anyway if I really like the art. I just think they're great books to just kind of have and people can leave through them and whatnot. An art book with lore or any kind of text in it, whether it's behind the scenes, you just tell me how you made the game or the process of making a miniature or an art piece or a location or whatever, or, you know, specific lore like stories and stuff like that. I love reading this stuff. This is perfect, like, coffee table uh, book to me is an art book from some game, especially if you went to somebody's house and you've never even played the game. You're like, what is this thing? I'm opening this up and I'm seeing this dude here. Um, so this is kind of what I mean by suggestive right it's like it's that's kind of like a brain maybe and then uh, like maybe there is is that eyes is it not is that technology or you know it just kind of gives kind of this eerie kind of sense to it and then of course there's specific ones like 
why not? I love the layout here again. So the the binding here looks really good. It's not like the um the the comic book where the, the pages like it goes all the way into the glue and it's it, it's like this glue seam here. So you, you like cut off words and stuff. It's all one image. I love that it's offset here. So instead of just full page or anything like that, it's like kind of two thirds and then the last third is more images, but then also some text and stuff. Just really cool. I'm liking this. Look at that. So I'm not going to look through everything here. I just wanted to kind of get a sense. Here's more people. There's a little bit on each character by the looks of it. Some have whole stories around them. Some don't. Uh, yeah, these these are great. Uh, okay. Oh, look, look at this. So here's like the art for the enemy. And then there's like a, kind of a progression with the different face ideas that they had. This kind of stuff is really cool. I love this stuff. Really cool. And that, that's some great art there too. Very cool. Let's skip around some. Yeah, that's awesome. Devourer of Worlds. Heck yes. Look at page 91. Page 99. Did they really do 100? Is it 100? 100. Yep. 100. You get some credits and some more art. So that works. Wow. Awesome. Cool. We are overwhelmed by it with the gratitude for every backer who entrusted us with his or her hard-earned money, putting his or her faith in the game and our team. Deep Madness literally would not exist without you from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you. That's great. I appreciate it. That is awesome. Cool. I like it. I like it. Let's get into those miniature roundtable things and wrap things up. All right, guys. So that's it. That's the unboxing video. I hope you guys had fun with it. Now, again, in just a moment, you're going to see the miniatures on rotation and some great lighting, some really good detail, some crisp focus. It'll look really nice. So it won't just be moving it around all that. You'll be able to see a lot of the miniatures in really, really good quality here real soon. So I wanted to thank you for watching. And again, there's a link to the Kickstarter preview page, and that'll be going live on the 19th for Dawn of Madness. You saw some of the miniatures there as I kind of compared and contrasted. So just FYI, there's more to come. Obviously, I'm going to do a review. Yes, I'm behind the reviews. I just got you Titans. You're welcome for that. Next will be Arena, and then this, and then who knows what I'll be trying to do next, but there's sure to be more to come there. And again, just as a huge reminder, coming up very soon at the beginning of December is my big 2020 upcoming Kickstarter video. It is definitely the biggest video I put out. There's a ton of games I haven't even mentioned to you guys yet that are going to be there. There's going to be some really good info. There's going to be a lot of you know, who knows when, a lot of pegged games that maybe just had a release, like a, a release, press release, so a lot of stuff to come there. So if you're not subscribed, you're going to want to, so you can get that video in your inbox and actually make sure you don't miss it so that you can kind of plan accordingly on what you think you're going to back and not back going right into 2020 so that you're well prepared because they're going to start coming at you right there in January. Okay, guys, as always, thanks so much for watching. Have an awesome day, and I'll talk to you soon. All right, so this is kind of the final look at the close-up look of the miniatures that you guys have been waiting for. I know this has been a long video. There's a lot of stuff to go over, but as you can see, the detail over here is actually really, really good. The fact that this is a second edition, or not a second edition, but a second Kickstarter version, so these miniatures aren't necessarily newly sculpted or anything like that. So this is kind of how they were before, too. Shows kind of how good they were at the time and gives me a lot of confidence of how good Dawn of Madness is going to be. The facial structures are all there. They actually have lips, nose, eyes, eyebrows, nose ridges, cheeks. Uh, they can actually hold different uh, facial expressions, so they don't do a lot with that. Um, though in Dawn of Madness, as I pointed out, they do a ton with that, which is cool. Very unique poses, too, like her with kind of the syringe out like that is very cool. Uh, the satchel, I think, is kind of unique here. Um, and then, you know, of course, you know, this guy with the... Uh, you know, the, the necklace and then his like briefcase on the side and uh, a lot of them I think are actually really really good and I like how a lot of them look uh, if there was one thing to maybe complain about a little bit it would be uh, some, of, some of the gun details like this guy's gun is really lacking but their fingers uh, I already gushed enough about the fingers probably but my goodness can these people do some uh, very nice realistic uh, and nuanced hands which I quite appreciate all right, here is almost all the other heroes, so you can see quite a few here. I don't normally do these big shots like this, but I didn't want to inundate you with a whole bunch of different ones, so I figured let's stick almost all of them on here. The two extra ones are going to be coming up next, and as you can see, there's a wide range. You can be in power suits. You can be in uh, submergible suits. 
You can, you know, look like you just came out of the jungle. You can be a child. You can be a crazy mad doctor. You can be what looks like to an android kind of person. You can be some weird cultist person. You can be the guy from Dead Space. You can, so you can be Isaac. You can be Black Widow. You can be Gordon Freeman. You can be, <laughs> I mean, like, there's, there's a ton of, options here a ton of stuff you can do some you know kind of uh ip throwbacks some more fitting than others just a lot of variety and as you can see each of their poses are actually quite unique the fact that you got people crouching is just insane to me like that's that's something you do not see every day and i actually really appreciate that uh so that's that's just cool and again detail yeah the details all there i'm 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 liking what i'm seeing i think the armor is nice and hard and then you know like muscles and stuff like that and hair are nice and kind of soft and i think that works really well all right next up we have again the drifter king and all of his epic monster glory and then the two other uh heroes that we have here the the, the kind of HP Lovecraft himself book one, and I forget what this other one, what his name is, but as you can see, the skill is there. I think that's exciting to fight something that much bigger than you. That's always really good, but not, you know, crazy out of place there. What I love most about this Drifter King is actually, first of all, that he, while he gets smaller than his base at the bottom, he bulges out, so he ends up bigger than the base. His tentacles are coming out, and the, he's like clawing over this big rock thing painted that's gonna look amazing especially with that bone spine thing going there plus the tentacles plus the cape plus the you know the weapon that he has there it's just it's all gonna look really good painted i'm really excited for that one uh, speaking of painting let me know in the comments below which you would like to see me paint um, i'm definitely running behind on painting i'm trying to play all these games get the reviews out have some fun with them actually enjoy these games but boy, do I got to paint some of these. The moment, I, the more I look at them, the more I'm excited by just how great they all look. All right, next up we have some of the enemies. I'm actually going to show you every miniature of the core box and then almost all of the miniatures from all the other box. But uh, there will be a few that I might not show, but you're getting the gist of it. You can see that big gap on that one there when it comes to the assembly. It just... uh you could fill it with like you know, like pus or vomit or something like that, which I'm tempted to do, or you could just gap fill it, or you could do a little bit of both. I think maybe some gap fill and then some vomit on there, and you'll or some blood. You'll hide all the all the creases you need to there. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, like a lot of the enemies there with like their they're still standing quite good even with their toes or whatever. There's a lot of texture differences between them, and I think that's really cool. It lives them. It just makes them more interesting. So. Uh, you know, the guy's splitting arm here is a lot more muscular and veiny, whereas his body's more bulbous and stuff like that. A lot of dynamic poses, which means a lot of assembly. And for the most part, the assembly's pretty good. There are some issues, though, as you can see. And boy, do I love those little skittering guys. Those guys are great. I like them. All right, so here's the bigger guys in the core box. Here's some of the, the big baddies you can be fighting in there. And yeah, as you can see, they're sufficiently gross and weird and uh, abnormal they go for not just body horror but i think just uh kind of unsettling things like I, I think this guy has a little bit too small of a head at least for what you're used to seeing and so stuff like that i think can or, or just hands that are gripping i think gripping hands are always kind of gross some people freak out with feet so he's got a foot hanging out there why not uh, again it's a lot of taking those kind of big heavy tropes and stuff like that like w w tentacle worm things with like mouths that can protrude with rounded teeth all over that you know obviously people can't handle that a lot of times it just looks gross and nasty and painting these up would be fun painting up gross things is just fun painting up armor that's weathered is really fun so is like just making things look gross disgusting i love it 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 I, I don't know why but the process of doing it feels maybe a bit more crafty and it's just again a, a joy uh, another thing I got is I got some Vallejo Heavy Gel, uh, link in the description below for that, but that's going to be what I'm going to be using for a lot of my water on the bases, so a lot of splashes and stuff like that. Uh, I'm really excited with how it looks. I'm going to try mixing in some colors into it and put, using a clear and vice versa, and because I want to actually make some of the miniatures themselves wet. I think that would look really cool. Uh, just a lot of, I, I have a lot of plans I want to try with these. All right, next up is this right here, this guy here. One of my all-time favorite miniatures of this of this game. Um, when I saw this, this literally alone made me for sure I want to back it. Um, just the, the the dudes hanging out of them and growing out of them everywhere. 
just sick and disgusting. Uh, this one, yeah, I, it would, I would hate painting it. It's uh, people sitting in chairs, so you have to paint like a, inside the chair, and so it's really hard. Uh, Mr. Tongue Guy, though, is one of my favorites as well. Uh, like I said, he just reminds me of uh, just some old video game enemies, and he's just disgusting. He's kind of, you know, like the liquor or whatever. And this guy I actually really like too. Uh, I mean, I think he's a more straightforward design, except for the fact that he's clawing over the stuff and like gripping it and pulling himself forward. Like he's like trying to lunge at you real quick. And that, that part I really love. Again, I think the sculpt design of these miniatures is really, really good. And I don't know if you've noticed or not, but even the bases are really nice and, you know, fairly flat and it just, there's not really a lot of bent parts or issues there. They're, they're actually quite good for the most part. It looks like just a, kind of a, a normal amount of cleanup. I wouldn't put it as light, but I wouldn't put it as heavy as some of the other ones I've seen either. So in general, the assembly good is good in general. The uh, uh, cleanup is good. The, the sculpt design, I, I actually almost always like. And uh, the detail level is perfectly fine for what I need out of a miniature, uh, even as a painter. So really happy about that, too. All right, here's some more. These are some of the uh, the cooler ones. I especially like the, uh, I, 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 I want to say he's a drifter. Uh, I, I can't remember the name. This guy right here that's like melting. Um, that just looks awesome. I love the look that they captured that in the sculpt itself. And uh, I imagine it'd be really fun to paint. Uh, her face freaks me out, so I didn't notice her weird head, um, when, like, for when I first looked at it, uh, I was more, I think, concerned with her, like, uh, feet and then that tail, but that head is freaky, like, it just doesn't seem to match the rest of the miniature, which is exactly what you want to do. That being said, this guy is probably upset that I just commented on her head because he has none, uh, which is cool too. Uh, his super long arms, I think, are also kind of freaky, and like his overly large hands. And this guy's just a good action pose, I feel. I think this is like maybe a more, a more classic, straightforward, muscular humanoid that's gonna like has a, a weaponed, uh, uh, hands that, that can hurt you. Um, but done really well. And then again, the head and the open mouth, I think, just change everything. All right, and now obviously you guys wanted to see the faces of, or the sphere of faces, or see, I can't even remember. It's it, it, This has been such a crazy unboxing. Thank you guys for sticking around, by the way. I know it's been a while, but these are the big ones. Obviously, everybody was in on this. If you if you walked into the campaign on the second time around, this is what you wanted. Uh, I love the stuff falling out of the briefcase. I think that's that really, really cool on that guy. I like that. I like the super tall chicks in behind Isaac from uh, 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 Dead Space. Uh, yeah, weird, bent over, hovering, pregnant, tentacle chick. What was to go wrong there? This guy here is probably the more, you know, uh, like, he's cool. It's just compared to all these other ones that seem to tell so much of a story. This one seems kind of straightforward here. Um, like, I love the fact that Hannah has a doll, and then it looks like she ends up being the doll. I think that's kind of a cool idea, and of course it has a cool base, too. Speaking of which, again, with the sculpted bases, it's always weird to me when some bases are sculpted like that, and then some aren't. Uh, it's whatever. Also, putting the Isaac one on a base is kind of odd. I felt like you could have taken that ba the bottom base off and just left them with the sculpted base, but again, whatever. Either way, these are really, really cool, and of course we're getting now to pretty much everyone's favorites. Yep, that's right. The big head with all the arms coming out of the mouth. Can't go wrong there. That is just some fun stuff. Of course, the whole Cthulhu guy opening up the pages while this dude's like head is is off while he's screaming and arms are coming out of him and grabbing him and he's stuck in this chair. What's to go wrong there? And then of course, you have the big guy dragging the dead person or a dying person. Uh, again, sure, why not? Yeah, let's go for it. I dig it. Um, the, uh, the kind of, I've become a sacrifice and now I'm being worshiped as my head has splayed open and as dripping down my body. Uh, yeah, that's a thing. Sure. Why not? But man, yeah, painting this head is going to be excited. I'm, I'm the only bummer there is, and, and again, I think I'll ask for a replacement because this is the miniature I wanted to paint out of here first. And it, it's, it's like, it's not assembled well on the base. I'm going to try wiggling it, see if maybe I can manually fix it, but I, I'm kind of doubtful because so much of it is already attached. Um, kind of a bummer, but uh, either, I mean, the miniature design and sculpt is still there. And it, it, again, it's so rare because a lot of the assembly, I think, is really good. 
It just so happened that that one was kind of lackluster. This guy too, I plan on getting wet or like the hot water treatment to kind of bend his, uh, his intestines down there. But anyway, that's it. That's all I had guys. Thanks so much for watching. I can't wait to play this. Let you guys know what I, I think. Also, I have Dawn of Madness. So I will obviously be playing through that and I'll let you guys know what I think of Dawn of Madness as well. Thanks so much for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I'll talk to you soon.